Welcome to the Black Lodge Games live stream. As always, yeah, yeah. starting directly at 8.30 p.m. Absolutely. We are not late. We did smoke cigarettes, though. A uh, lot. We Actually, we smoked, smoked a lot of cigarettes. A lot of cigarettes. <laughs> which, that's the key. Yeah. We need to, like, chain smoke three cigarettes in a row. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be on time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we got some, uh, something cool going on tonight. We got Ryan Howard of Rolling Bones and the Wonky. Uh, they're both here. They are smashing Kickstarter goals right now. Um, yeah, you'd love to see it. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that right now but the, uh, in a little bit. But they've got um, a Kickstarter for uh, two kind of new adventures in two different settings that are broadly <laughs> compatible with uh, any D20 system that you're using. Mm -hmm. um, and they, uh, yeah, they funded, what, within... 24 hours i think and then now you're hitting stretch goals it yeah. was a little over 24 but something like that yeah mm -hmm. and we're crushing through these stretch goals super exciting and thank you for having us on it's a pleasure to be here with you yeah Very yeah man. For sure. absolutely yeah. we okay. like uh we like to help people show their their stuff especially yes. when, they're, when they're good people so <clears throat> y'all so. try and be a good salesman <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep all right let's see who we got here uh 12 minutes until start if the boys haven't started smoking their filthy <laughs> theater kid clothes already we ain't starting on time yeah <laughs> well we would except uh obama banned clothes banned cigarettes clothes. like can't 10 get, years what are ago. they jar and blacks yeah well that yeah that <laughs> yeah. was why i started smoking was because he banned clove cigarettes yeah. and someone was traveling abroad was like i can get you cloves i was like all right yeah <laughs> so i smoked the whole <laughs> carton and then made. yeah then at yeah. the end i was like I want more. I want more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, thanks, Obama. You gave me cancer. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we all miss cloves, indeed. Uh, How's it going? Dare to Wonder. Regular got here. We got uh, Nathaniel Alvarez. Yes, the boys. Of course it is. And Rex Teal showing up. Good Rex to Teal. Ooh. What's up, man? And of course. The one and only. The one and only squat bench deadlift. Nice. Tasty wind. Good to see you too. Love rolling bones and can't wait to get my hands on some of Wonky's material. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, going to be good. Cool, <laughs> How's it going? We got Primeval Fantasy RPG you, in here. Thraxis. Thraxis. Love to see it. He uh, he named us Ginger Fraser and and uh, young Steve Buscemi in a, in a very <laughs> funny YouTube comment. Um, so thank you again for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, oh, man. John Smith, we got a lot of more and more chats coming in. Something, something live reactions. <laughs> Already took care of that. <laughs> we are so prepared tonight. You're not mm -hmm. dealing with li with live reactions. Yeah. You're not dealing with your late hosts. You're just no amateurism here. That, yeah, that quality live stream. Primo content. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <clears throat> Hi, we, we dispense nothing but Kino here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was about to say, yes, this is the Kino corner, but it's not the Kino corner. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, he lives he lives elsewhere in the in this town. He's a good yes. guy. Um, What's up, Heath? Good to see you. Um, All right. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going to do, I think, kind of the standard thing we do with everybody. How'd you guys uh, get into tabletop role playing games initially? How did how did you get stuck into this this death spiral of autism that we love so much? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't Wonky, that do, do you want to take this to begin with, or do you want me to? Sure. Take this off? Yeah, I can start this off. So, um, my background actually didn't really start in tabletop role playing at all. I was a tabletop war gamer, so I was really big into oh, wow. Warhammer style games since I was I don't know like six years old, something like that. I just kind of grew up in the miniature hobby, mm -hmm. and so by extension of that, as I grew older, I started expanding my interest into other games, and then maybe around fifteen. Uh, something like that. It was the big fourth edition boom when that was coming mm -hmm. out. They're putting out mm -hmm. trailers and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this is the kind of thing I'm into. But that's yeah. all I ever really knew the game as. And so uh, years pass by. I didn't really pay too much attention to it. And then really late into my teenage years, my friends and I kind of started to pick it up. Uh, one of them had a Pathfinder book or something. And I was like, oh, I have these weird D&D fourth edition books that nice. I bought a while ago. And <laughs> we kind of just made a game out of it. Um, realized that was horrible i got stuck as the forever dungeon master and then oh, yeah. you know multiple years of playing since then and here we are a decade or yeah, two later I, and it's life <laughs> i got stuck as the forever dm and for like years i lamented that fact and then i was a player really? in a game <laughs> and i immediately realized i was like it's so much better. oh it's so much better to be the dm <laughs> i was like i love doing this <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> <laughs> And what did you think about fourth edition? Because I, I I played one session on like the day that it came out, but didn't I barely remember it? Yeah. 
Um, so that's a great question. My my opinions on it are kind of tainted by the fact that I didn't actually read the rules or play the game. For the <laughs> I just had a rule book, Most and I was like, it says strength. We're supposed yeah. to have these sheets on the table, and this dice <laughs> is the one we use for everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, it had some cool, inspiring artwork. And uh, the one thing I really took away from it was there was a module produced called Thunderspire Labyrinth, I want to call it, something like that. And it was uh, what really drove me to game design as a whole, because I didn't realize that there were like pre-published adventures and all this kind of a thing. Yeah. So that started up my long rooted obsession with modules, which is like my big collection now. It's pretty much all I nice. care about is mm. adventures. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've uh, this is the first time I've actually run a module i've played i technically really? played the module when i was in yeah. um tw- uh, let's see i had to have been like seventh or eighth grade the diablo 2 <clears throat> DD second edition box set came Hell out yeah. uh that oh, had uh a module within that my friend ran that and that was a ton of fun even though we got uh they did get Thacko wrong, and I tried to correct them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that didn't go over well. Um, yeah. So somehow we did some sort of... <laughs> I don't know how we were handling attack rolls, but I was like, I think we're The actual wrong. one true way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but this is the first time I've actually run a module. It's uh, very, very good. Sinister Stone of Saqqara by uh, Alexander yeah, for Reese. Um, mm-hmm. Heck yeah. yeah. Yeah, I haven't... I've ran a couple modules but that's not the majority of what what i've done i think i've um what have i done i ran we never finished it uh mm-hmm. because of scheduling issues um it's always the uh, the the bane of yeah anything really uh the shattered star adventure path for pathfinder one um i did the key of destiny i played in the key of destiny dragonlance age of mortals game that was the first game I ever played in. And then um, I ran it later. Actually, that was the last <clears throat> last thing I was doing before I moved here from mm-hmm. Virginia. We didn't finish that either. Um, but you did play in that game for a year and a half. So it's not yeah. like you six sessioned that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and then uh, the large mega, it's not even a mega dungeon. It is a mega dungeon, but so much more of this large sandbox um, the Slumbering Tsar, uh, by, uh, from Frog God Games. Also That's the Pathfinder one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It sounds cool. really cool. It is really cool. Yeah. Killer and, name. <laughs> uh, it actually would go over well. What's the this. guy, the money changer or whatever that you're talking about? Oh, the about? usurer. Yeah. The usurer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. go, you, you, there's one, there's one ramshackle town. It really shouldn't be even be called a town. It's hundreds of miles away from any sort of civilization. And the guy is like a robber baron of this community of miscreants. He doesn't accept gold. You have to exchange it for his currency that he makes out of like <laughs> like tainted iron or like <laughs> aluminum. <clears throat> and um, the, upcha- the, uh, the exchange rate is five to one. So for every five gold pieces, you get one bit, one iron bit. Uh-huh. And then if you try and exchange it back to gold, it's like a further seven to one. But like nobody will accept nobody will accept money. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Brian? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so um let's see, uh, Dare to Wonder in chat here said autistic Warhammer plus theater kids <clears throat> equals TTRPG. Yeah. Um that's I mean like I, I was never diagnosed with autism, but I mean, I did start playing Warhammer Until when tonight. I was in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did start playing Warhammer when I was in middle school. Um, and then I got really into comics and other nerdy things. Never really got into D&D, brought it up one time and my mom had a conniption fit. Um, <laughs> it was like the one holdover from like 80 satanic panic that mom actually still cared about was D and D. Yeah. But in high school, I got really into theater and I became, uh, an actor. I, I was a, a professional actor for a couple years. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't do anything big obviously, but <laughs> as I was going through college, I, I started to kind of explore, uh, role-playing a little bit more just 
because it seemed like it fit with my interests both in theater and all things geeky. And so found myself playing fifth edition right as it was first coming out. And then um, basically from there, I was hooked immediately. It, it mm -hmm. was a chance for me to speak in a funny voice and pretend to be someone else for a little bit. And then just as I kept going with it, I discovered there's a lot more to it. Um, yeah. Kind of backpedaled my way into the OSR world by making friends with a, a man named Levi Combs. And mm -hmm. that's how uh, Wonky and I actually ended up uh, becoming friends because it's because of Levi that I went to North Texas RPG convention and that's where Wonky and I met. Nice. Oh, right on. Are you guys going to be there this year? Oh yeah. yeah you know it. I'm excited. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're making plans most likely going to be there. Uh, oh, so heck we'll, yeah. Excited yeah, to meet you in person. Way. That'll be yeah, killer. We'll be hang out. Yeah, definitely. Probably. Yeah. Definitely. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's the same same sort of thing uh, with me. You know, uh, we, we talked about this uh, yeah. on your show, but I, mm. you know, I, I was a theater kid and you know fell in love with Vampire the Masquerade and all the, all that stuff. But this was like I find these games so much more interesting and fulfilling because you can play so many different types of of characters. You know that you would never get to play. <laughs> you just don't get to do when you're doing right. you know the Music Man or whatever. You, know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to play Conan. <laughs> <laughs> We got uh, trouble. Maybe we just right need to change the theater. Yeah. <laughs> and we got Dare to Wonder asking, uh, Wonky, oh, what's your favorite tau. faction? Oh, sorry. Do you have a language thing? Um, no, we don't. No, it is not the Tau. Uh, God, Emperor of Mankind, beloved by all. Nice. Um, I was a big chaos guy throughout my life. Now I'm not because that's a horrible path. Um, <laughs> beyond that, I've always had a thing for <clears throat> Tyranids. They're fun. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <sighs> I should uh, be very specific, though. I, I pretty much have a cutoff line at about 2010. Everything after that, not a big fan of Games Workshop uh, products. Yeah. <laughs> I, I dislike the most about Games Workshop is that they just completely ripped off Blizzard. Uh, <laughs> Like Warcraft, There's a lot of things Warcraft. going on there. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> they don't really have a lot of... Uh, waiting for the chat to be like... <laughs> <laughs> wrong! <Yeah>. Wrong! <laughs> it was the other way around! I would love to... I, I've said it before. Um, I have like a midwits understanding of, of like the 40k lore. It seems really interesting and... Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think there's a ton I would like about it. But more than that, I, I I want to be like proficient in the lore so we can make oh. videos saying how wrong everybody else is. Because <laughs> the 40K community would find us immediately. That is yeah. the slingshot to start on. Right. Yep. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Telling 40K players they're wrong is they're wrong. Yeah, yeah, a way to get eyes on you. Honestly. <laughs> A tourist's perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll have Dorito crumbs spat all over you. It's going to be an ordeal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rex Teal saying it's interesting to see more designers starting with war games ah. instead of working their way back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't read the fucking manual for the <laughs> fourth edition. No. Jeez Louise, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fourth edition isn't that bad, but it breaks apart quickly after like fifth to seventh level. Combat just takes way too long. I would believe that. Yeah. That is something eventually, sometime this year, like I've said, I before I moved here, I picked up a copy, yeah. a used copy of the DMG and the player's handbook. I will read it. Yeah. Um, Apparently the monster manual is the best of all of them. Yeah. From like what people have said. They said it's like the fucking crown jewel of that game. I kind of really want to love it now. Yeah, I know. Like, me the too. fact that everybody hates it, <laughs> the general consensus cannot be accurate. <laughs> the real punk rock thing to do would be to write for fourth edition exclusively from this point. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I'm wondering, like, nobody's even done like an OGL fourth edition clone, right? I don't know if it's a lack of demand or what's up there. <laughs> There's a game called 13th Age, which is pretty much oh, yeah. an OGL 4th edition. Interesting. Okay, okay, cool. I oh, played that game once at Gen Con. Thrax is for $5. <clears throat> Thank you for the super chat, man. We really do appreciate that. We need a BLG meetup at North oh, yeah. Texas. I Agreed. Agree. 
Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And Matthew Pickard, thank you for your <laughs> two Canadian loons or whatever they are. Uh, Warhammer 40 <laughs> not even K, real money. I like more that. like Warhammer 40 <laughs> gay. <laughs> <Am I right>? <laughs> <laughs> That's golden. <laughs> it is British. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah honestly, though. Yeah. It's gay until proven straight. <laughs> no reason for slander, right? <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, that, that, uh, what edition of D&D had the best adventure writing? I think I that's no a question idea. for Wonky, maybe. I really like Gygaxian era stuff, personally. Mm -hmm. I have yep. themed pretty much my entire module writing ideology off of B1 and B2, uh, In Search of the Unknown and Keep on the Borderlands. I think it is the perfect template for learning how to DM, how to be a good player. Mm -hmm. It incorporates pretty much every pillar of play to the extent that you need. It's <clears throat> concise, tight, packed. B2, realistically, is the best thing to learn how to play an old school game mm -hmm. i i'd argue and b2 yeah. which one is keep on the borderlands because i, I oh know. right there right i, there, I finally got a copy okay. of b1 and b2 you just did. Like nice. yep. <laughs> i've been rooting for this for so long ryan i'm so proud of you god damn it god yes you are yeah. gonna be great now now <laughs> i'm curious why you would give such like a wrong opinion there because <laughs> oh yeah I, <laughs> <Start at me. laughs> uh, I know nothing about uh uh, the the OSC or uh, the OSC the uh, BX whatever the mm -hmm. initial iterations of modules except I did play in AD and D second edition through Keep on the Borderlands okay and I hated it every <laughs> every you second of it hate the adventure or did you hate second edition because I hated both with, of them. I um, hate second edition honestly I do hate second edition <laughs> burn like it down edition. <laughs> yeah. Second edition can make you hate even the the best adventure. Like second edition, I will believe that. That's, yeah. that's very well, it's, true. Well, it's it's funny because I like grew up with second edition in the house, and I tried playing it so much, I hated it every time. So and I felt bad. like I was just like, this is just not working. I'm so bad at this. And then <laughs> later on, I was like, no, I really just that game sucked. And then for like 20 years past, I never played it. And uh, Nick plays in this second edition game for mm -hmm. like. A year and a half. A year and a half. And I was like, what was that like? And he starts making every single complaint that I had <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> I was like, instantly correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it is I such like a shame it. because like the art was so evocative. It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. And everything else. The settings were cool. Shit. The video games that came out of it were cool. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And not not even just like Bal obviously Baldur Gate was was fucking great, but the uh, it was like the, yeah. the early weird Dark Sun games uh, that <laughs> only ran on yeah, like Dark Sun. DOS. <laughs> Planescape, I think. Yeah, Planescape oh, yeah, must have Torment. also been yeah, yeah, yeah. in the second well, edition. And, and all, it's a all shame the... because it's a shame about those Dark Sun games because Dark Sun fucking awesome. I love it. It really is. Yeah, it's a I've really never cool played setting. in the Dark Sun world, but I would love to. It's like all of the cities are run by these like evil chaotic dragons. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so rad. Yeah. Uh, it, hell yeah. And I, thankfully, I have, I've often but, said that I would I never want to like work on a D, D product my my one exception if i had like unlimited funds and could do whatever i want <clears throat> gaming wise i would buy dark sun from yeah Watson. there's a lot i would do with and unlimited i would funds yeah. and power <laughs> well, <laughs> unlimited funds that i had to spend only on gaming yeah i, yeah, I yeah, would yeah. buy that piece of the ip and and yeah. publish dark sun as my own i what i would do I would buy all of D and D, and I would basically do D and D Beyond, but I would have everything they ever published available, translated into digital format, and for things that sold really well digitally, do print runs of those, like limited edition print runs. Mm. We've talked about this. The yeah, you know, the, the, that's the what actual they strategy. Do. Yeah. yeah. Don't just have it be a walled garden. Shut drive through RPG out entirely, like obviously. Yeah. But Nick brought up the point. He's like, the best thing that Watsi has at this point is they have all the best shit. They have they the have shit everything. that everyone wants. Yeah. They and they won't just, sell it. <clears throat> they should sell it. They should sell it exclusively through their, their marketplace. Yeah. They should uh, have online VTT, all the bullshit material, have it be available for everything digitize everything if you want to like from a straight like cynical like machiavellian point of view yeah that's 100 the mark the way to make the most money 
if you want to play AD and D Second Edition, if you want to play uh, War of the Lance, you want to play through Dragon Lance again. Boom, we got you. Yeah, you can get it. It's it's nine ninety nine for X Y Z whatever. You get the Raceland character sheet. You get them. You get the the VTT mini. You get the special dice. And but if you play uh, first edition, it locks you out of the game <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of one to one time. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the VTT so, doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> Space Roadie here in chat has a, a point that he's he's making about B one and B two. Uh huh. Uh, saying neither of those adventures have anything you can't get from a zero prep game. And and what I would say to that, I know, like I just held up my brand new copy of of those adventures what you get in b1 and b2 are basically the training wheels to teach you how to run a zero prep game because most people mm -hmm. can't bingo you know, most people can't just do that out of the gate a lot of people need some help to get to that point and when you look at b1 and b2 you basically have a wide open map with a couple different points of interest and yeah. right. lots of things that can murder you if you're not careful so right. yeah, it, it's priming you to set up things like that on your own and then put your players into those situations and let them kind of deal with it in a zero prep manner. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree that yeah. like, I think the structure of keep on the borderlands for sure is a very good one. Um, like I said, like sinister stone is, it is keep on the borderlands, but in, you know, right. or an empire, this is uh, <clears throat> for adventure conquer King. Um, hmm. And the thing that I, I'm finding, like the dungeon is a cool dungeon. It's very well designed. I, the dungeon is the part that I like the least, least about this at the moment. <laughs> Are we uh, talking we'll about B2? Uh, we're talking about, talking about the the modern interpretation through Alex, the lens of uh, Alexander Bacris with Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. Stuff. I'm not familiar. Yeah, okay. so so gotcha. it's the same <laughs> same sort of premise. You have the, mm -hmm. a, a starting town with a nearby dungeon. Um, there's multiple multiple factions, factions that, things that are that are gotcha, on gotcha. the same side but you know they're they're all like kind of uh, trying to double cross each other and, and stuff like that right um and that makes sense but the the thing that i love about this that module and it's something that i always look for is uh and anything that has like setting related material is interesting npcs yes Yes, oh, this is point. full yeah. of interesting NPCs because that's where we get the most mileage out of our stuff, and that's and that's what's that's causing. The most, that's the right. most interesting thing. If you're going yeah. to do a dungeon, <clears throat> that is the most interesting thing. More interesting than the loot you find, more interesting than the trappings of you know, what did this dungeon used to be. Um, you know, more interesting than random encounters. Again, whether it's in the dungeon or out of the dungeon, like again, the user in that yeah. slumbering star thing, like great character, yeah. fantastic, memorable character that you meet right away. He's yeah. like the most powerful <laughs> enemy, not because of stat wise, but because you can't you can't beat the market, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> and you can't do anything about it. Like yeah. at, it doesn't matter what level you are, or how many hit points you have, right? The, you know. There's something that Professor Dungeon Master told me. Uh, this was the first time he was on my show. We were talking about designing urban adventures, and this is kind mm -hmm. of like the, the seeds of what would eventually become Nighthaven. Uh, and, and he told me that when you're building a city, and this applies even to like non-city uh, supplements that you're doing, treat it almost like Springfield. When you go to a certain part of yeah. the map, you know you're going to encounter these characters. So like you go to Moe's, you know mm -hmm. that like Mo is going to be yeah. there. Mm. You you know, you go to the donut shop, you're going to run into Chief Wiggum. There, there yeah. There's all <laughs> these, you fill your map with interesting spots and then you have people that are always there to interact with. And that's right. something that I very consciously tried to do in, right. in Night Haven. Nice. I got, we got a super chat that's here, but I think that's a great segue into taking a look at the Kickstarter page in just a moment. Uh, Matthew Pickard said, I've had some bad experiences with third edition D&D, &D, but I've always wanted to play a game of Thieves World. The magic system in it not is familiar really with cool. Thieves. I am also I'm not, not either. familiar. No. It's a... It came out during like the peak of the D20 boom, mm -hmm. uh, which was third edition's SRD, and it was published by Green Ronin Games. Um, okay. 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 And it's it's based on the Thieves World 
uh, anthology series. If you guys are familiar with with those books, I'm not. But if it had to have been a franchise product, if Green Run and did yeah. it, yeah, it's they did the Game of Thrones game, right? What's that? They did the Game of Thrones game, right? They did. Yes, the they did. Okay. They also did the Dragon Age um, RPG, okay. which I uh, Thieves World. I like. I, I'd be lying if I said Thieves World had no inspiration on Nighthaven. It does a little bit. <laughs> um, it's basically set around this city, and I can't remember the name of the city off the top of my head right now. Um, but it's a city that's been like conquered multiple times. It's kind of in the middle of an empire change when the, the first anthology starts and mm -hmm. you're following different characters throughout the city, uh, including one guy who's like the ultimate soldier of the empire named Tempest Thales, who's basically about as uh, shown in anime as it gets. <laughs> mm. but it's a really interesting setting uh a lot of the stories are really yeah sanctuary that's the name of the city yeah uh, there's I, I a lot of interesting stories and the role-playing <laughs> game is very good yeah. at least from what i've seen nice nice well with that let me uh pull up a kickstarter page here and Ooh. i'm actually gonna have to adjust the window size here so i can make sure that i can see everything and pop you over here all right, we need to add. This is great, great stream right now. There we go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. So Guts and Glory, uh, give us a little rundown. We have Bella Fallow and Nighthaven. So these are two different settings, correct? Yes. Yep. So okay. this is our coming together as two young bros who want to kick ass and revitalize the fantasy genre. And so uh, basically what it came down to is uh, if we're to use a music analogy, we didn't really like the record label options available. So we're coming up with our own little uh, indie festival i guess is what you could call it so guts and glory yeah. is where we're at um bella follow is my world setting i've been working on for like a decade i have crazy dreams all the time and so this is kind of nice. like my conglomeration setting of all this wild shit i've dreamed of throughout so the you're years. saying that all of your game design comes from cryptic symbolism in your dreams right uh, to some extent or another. I wouldn't call it so cryptic, though. Yeah. <laughs> Very based. <Yeah>. The, <laughs> based in Lynchia. Yeah. <laughs> um, and all of this artwork, uh, for those of you in the audience, uh, is actually done by Wonky. Yeah, um, that's me. <laughs> which is yeah. fucking rad. Like, I, Thank I you. absolutely yeah. love this. I really like that. I like the, the pyramid head looking guy. Yeah. Further on right. down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down well, in, uh, I'm a little, sp a little there spooky there. Yeah, yeah, so those are kind of the main antagonists. I guess you could call them like the the standard really bad guy that kind of chases mm -hmm. you throughout the the haunted house of my adventure because it's based on an estate and then kind of a dungeon down below it. And so those are like the guardians slash workers slash uh, prison guard kind of figures. Evil golems grown from uh, babies stolen from their wombs that are then like put into gourds and put into the fields and grown through necromantic rituals, all kinds of wild shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is very much the kind of stuff that we like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it okay? Cool, because I yeah. like. I was like, I hope I'm not going over the top here, but I'm gonna just lay yeah. it on the table. This is probably gonna be the grotiest adventure of 2024. This no, is, yeah. that's that's his that's heinous awesome. harvest is coming in swinging. I have nothing held back here. <laughs> Good. I mean, I I really I don't like the thing is like I don't like if it's just like sludge just for the sake of sludge. You know, I'm not. I don't like that. But I really hate that everything that is produced now is so sanitized yeah. yep mm -hmm. stole like, the words yeah. right out of my mouth yeah it's just it's so fucking boring like the <sighs> i don't want it's to so be it's so boring fantasy <laughs> yeah it's not even like it's it's not it's worse than that it's not because if you were coddling someone you at least would have some sort of goal in mind and an end it's just banal in the extreme mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just it. bad it's it's completely devoid of any color any imagination um yeah it's it's absolutely intolerable so i agree uh, any you. kind of any kind of vision is is good to see and so yeah you're saying this this kind of you start on this estate and it has a dungeon below it 
Oh, so is this, yeah. is this following, like, what's the structure of this? Is this sort of okay. keep on the Borderlands? Yes. So, and I should, yeah. uh, I want to go back on that. I shouldn't mm -hmm. be saying keep on the Borderlands is the best adventure ever written. That would be a ridiculous yeah. statement. It's because mm -hmm. this, this is, should back it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Look at me go. Um, <laughs> no, it's a very vanilla, boring, badly designed, you know, those caves of chaos are kind of whack. Anyway, um, <laughs> what I really like is that cycle of you start in a town, get familiarized with the cycle of loot extraction through dungeon mm. delving you know mm. over an expanse that's kind of what i was getting at so i did yeah, kind yeah. of theme it roughly on that but i took it to a little bit more of an extreme so i wanted to kind of get that spirit of the oregon trail i live in southeast alaska and i'm out in the woods like every day oh, wow. hunting and fishing and shit like that nice. um and so i wanted i bella follow was very much kind of a frontier era world with all kinds of apocalyptic and weird west and dark fantasy all kinds of bronze age shit thrown in it's a real mixed match in a lot of ways but all under this uh, I have kind of just universal tying themes throughout it, I guess. Um, that was kind of a weird tangent. But anyway, mm -hmm. so you start off um, in this little shepherd's village called Anzidi. Basically, a sketchy wizard has hired you to get his dragon egg back. His apprentice stole it and ran off to this religious puritanical colony pretty much like 200 miles away or so so it's a big old hex crawl just to get there and you have to go past various tribes of enemy you know evil goblins riding boars with chariots made from pilfered wagons all kinds of weird skin cults and you know all kinds of horrors on the way there nice. so you finally get to this janky messed up town and it is a terrible place to be um everyone is addicted to this substance called giggle tar that is forced upon them and it's <laughs> like a psychedelic narcotic it's you know kind of in that angel dust meets heroin uh mm -hmm. spectrum and basically this entire town's kind of a uh, just dazed and relaxed because they had just gone through a huge culling of their populace as they fell from faith due to their evil baron lord kind of um i don't want to spoil everything but mm -hmm. basically so <laughs> this entire town has been corrupted into this a uh, horrible uh, heretical colony just off in the middle of nowhere so the party kind of gets there there's no help no one's coming to save you and you have to go find this dude who stole the dragon egg so they end up party is going to end up going to the big estate on top of the hill basically is how it plays out after they investigate the town there's uh several little side dungeons and other quests to explore that kind of thing i'm pr pretty well fleshing this out um and then down below there's like a real kind of it's shorter but a real nasty dungeon crawl mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah the the yes. art is sort of like giving me the vibes of like um almost like house of a thousand corpses or uh mm. Devil's Rejects. Yeah, and, I like it. <laughs> and like, um, what is the the Wrong Turn series, which are the most retarded horror movies ever? But I they were. Them. I never watched them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, so uh, a lot of that's oh, inspirational yeah. stuff. Nice, <laughs> very good. I it's even have a coming through. Lords of Salem, Texas Chainsaw oh, Massacre, nice. yeah, and then nice. uh, what was it? I have yeah. uh, it's Filthy Hill Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Big it's, influence. It, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is my big unapologetic kind of middle finger in the air. I'm going to make nasty shit and you can't stop me. Let's go for it. Nice. <laughs> nice. And and one of the cool things that uh Wonky has in this adventure and th this is something when when he was telling me about it very much evoked kind of the the shadow over Innsmouth uh type feel. The the longer you stay in this weird town, the more it's like attention it it's on you. On you. Yeah. There's mm. this there's this almost timer on your your ability to explore there that that's at play just as more and more people start to realize that you don't belong there. It's it's a really interesting mechanic that he's added on top of this. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of something like that in uh the Sinister Stone as well. There is there's a a, a timer and there's some creeping corruption happening. It just yeah always very cool i like i like having a timer and associated with something too because it does it lights a fire under the ass of the well i mean especially if you're going for <clears throat> a more explicit horror thing yeah right that <clears throat> that adds to the horror of a of a, a, a clock ticking down yeah. before something happens whether you know what's going to happen or not you know uh most definitely i, think I, uh, I like the sort of sepia 
yeah tones uh, the here. entire dream series i had because i had like five or six really impactful dreams pretty much back to back within a very short time frame and all of them were just filtered through this weird sepia lens so you're yeah. you're spot on with that heck yeah 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 so and then to further uh sorry to interrupt there no, but ahead, to further ahead. kind of boost that timer thing i also have a threat tracker because random encounters are a huge part of this adventure because you know you're in a mm -hmm. village for half of this just exploring looking around and so so I came up with a system to where you have kind of five different threat levels that changes how uh, not only the frequency, but the intensity of the random encounters you're going to be facing. Yeah. So it allows clever players who aren't just going to stand in one building and have a, you know, one man army against a village of people. You know, that's stupid. I pretty much yeah. tell the DM, no, drag them to the buried man below, crucify them. They make, yeah. make yeah. it bad. You know, don't yeah. do that. You run off, go hide, recollect, lick your wounds. Very big into that kind of the balance of that scale and timer because mm -hmm. you know the longer you spend in town the more people are going to be looking for you yeah <laughs> mm. right hell yeah yeah very I like cool. that i like that a lot cool okay and then we got <laughs> and we go into night haven night haven mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah so night haven i like to describe it as uh Fawford and the gray mouser meets sin city Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I like that. It, it's an urban setting, and and my primary goal with Night Haven was to kind of teach people how to run adventures within cities and how to treat mm -hmm. cities as an adventuring environment in and of themselves. I actually had this uh, discussion slash debate happen on my show with uh, with <laughs> one Dr. Greg Gillespie. Uh, where he seemed to believe that a city was a safe environment where nothing bad could happen to you in the have context. Have you ever lived in a city? Have yeah. you, have you right. been to a city? <laughs> <laughs> and, Clearly uh, not. My my whole uh, outlook with Night Haven is basically yes, in a city you are like in game terms safe. But what that means is it's not expected that you're going to be carrying around heavy weapons and full adventuring right. gear at all times. Right. Yeah. And with <clears throat> crowds of people, any one of them could have a knife or a pistol or something that could cause you grievous bodily harm. Right. And that's you're not, you're not going to run into, you know, 2D6 ogres in the city. Right. There's no wildlife encounters. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... yeah. But, uh, but you could get stabbed or robbed or kidnapped. Uh yeah, and you're right. You're yeah. not going to be walking around in, in full plate. <laughs> yeah, but well, I mean that's that's such an artificial like game, yeah, game gamer way of looking at it, where you're you're in the safe zone. Yeah, right. Yeah, Every, yeah, nothing yeah. aggro's you. Um, you know your your save point is there, and you know the the city is just uh, a place of multiple different shops with infinite money. Right. And an inn where you can sort of immediately recover your hit points and get your spells back, and then you go back into the danger. I, I understand what he's talking about, but it's so wrong. Yeah, completely mm. wrong. Yeah. yeah. If you're playing in a in a living world, then the the cities are also going to have their own unique dangers. Yes. Mm. Great. And so what what we have with Night Haven, all of my uh, all of my entries in these guts and glory volumes that we'll be doing are framed around an in-universe uh, book called the Rakes Codex. Mm -hmm. And the Rakes Codex is like the Assassin's Codex from Assassin's Creed or the Thievius Raccoonus from <clears throat> Sly Cooper. Um, it's this book that's been compiled over multiple generations detailing the history and the inner workings of Nighthaven. And as uh, GMs and players, you will have an inside look at just how this city functions both inside and outside. And so each edition of the Rakes Codex includes a uh, description along with maps and encounter tables for mm -hmm. a certain region of the city. It outlines a faction or multiple factions within uh, the city. And then there's an adventure that ties together the factions and the region and in the case of this first volume of the Rakes Codex, it is uh, called Corpse Walk. And it's an adventure that deals with the city gates region and the city guard. Hmm. Oh, nice. <clears throat> so basically your, your entry and exit to 
That's a really cool the city. Yeah. Hmm. So I really like that. I so I I picked up on in the description for for Nighthaven. It's it's tied into this sort of in world uh, document, which is very cool. Uh, more more broadly, like you 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 touched on it, the like the the branding of yep. guts and glory. This is mm -hmm. volume one, volume two, volume three. Is the intention for both of you guys to with volume two and subsequent editions continue to spotlight different parts of this larger right now it's an implied setting largely apart from what's explicitly detailed right um you have the city of night haven and what seems to be hillbilly region the hillbilly of, yeah. region <laughs> yeah. the yeah. hills have eyes <laughs> and, you know and we're going to see like more dots on the map um like come online with yeah. With more uh, when is the to... second Kickstarter happening? Yeah, 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 is what yeah. we're asking. <laughs> <laughs> because that's that's the thing, right? This isn't mm -hmm. this isn't your both of your entire worlds just right. boom. Very uh, much so. Presented. It's more of a slow burn, which I do yeah. like. Um, exactly. I want to explore my setting of Bella follow through a series and installment of different adventures, and I'm even breaking it down even furthermore into different series. So this first nice. kind of, I guess, I guess you could call it an arc I'm doing. The first five books or so are all going to be themed around chaos within a kind of generalized <laughs> region of about maybe 300 miles or so. Um, okay. And then... <clears throat> You know, my next book after that is going to be about technomancy and uh, biopunk horror and all kinds of stuff like Which that. These, these I, are going to be way, I have my world. way different settings then. Um, the same yes. settings, same oh, world okay. of Bella Follow, just very different regions and different enemies, uh, uh, evil things. Yeah, that oh. kind of thing. Very cool. yeah, so I I'm like slowly that. unfolding out different sections of the world. Uh, I just, I don't want to do the big lore dump book. I don't want to make an atlas. I don't want any uh -huh. of that. Yeah. I want to explore it through the gameable content, let's call it. Yeah, I, mean, I that, like that. that. Yeah, that's a that's a great way to do it. It's like an anthology collection or like a midnight double feature. Yeah. You know, like yeah. collection, each each book, each cassette case, because you have two back-to-back -back horror movies. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I like it. You exactly. You totally get it. Like if I'm going to put my life work into this, you know, because I want to <laughs> keep doing Bella Follow forever. Realistically, uh -huh. um, let's yeah. start it off good. Let's start it off right and really put the time and love into making it so. Hmm. Yeah, that's a cool thing too because you can use that to. I mean, like obviously you could. Uh, I'm just thinking like, how do we productize this? You know, like yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> it's like you could you could do the the eventual compilation of it, but that can oh, also yeah. just you can beyond just a strict compilation of the modules you could you can have built up enough of the lore to write the lore book at some point to yeah. write oh, like the yeah. Atlas, yeah uh to have like this is the bellafalo campaign setting and if you want specific oh, adventures within it you know these are the modules that that go here and there um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's kind of genius i really like that idea yeah. actually you I'll be taking correct. royalties on that. No, yeah. I'm, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. And that's then, a that's a really cool uh, structure yeah. to it. Sorry, Ryan, yeah. go ahead. Oh, just my goal with Night Haven is to build out a complete city, district by district, and mm -hmm. faction by faction. So that's very cool. So that's every, that's 100 the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Like every single. Uh, entry will will have enough detail that you can run complete adventures within just one district with just a couple factions but if you start adding these things together you get more factions that can interact with each other factions the players can take control of mm -hmm. so that ultimately by the end of everything uh being released for night haven you have a complete city fully mapped out factions that are operating within it and then players are able to kind of move from this you know itinerant adventurer uh lifestyle mm. into controlling these factions and ultimately controlling the city whether through legitimate means or through the underworld yeah which Hell obviously yeah. the underworld uh, yes. is the correct way to do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're playing wrong if you're not doing that now um 
No, that's really cool too because the, the benefits to also building a city uh, piece by piece with this is that it's it's also very easily adaptable for mm. anyone else's game. If, if they want to yep. say like, there's a lot of really cool stuff in Nighthaven, but I kind of don't want to call it Nighthaven. It's my my city, whatever, but I want to drop this part of it in. Right. They yep. absolutely can in kind of a toolkit fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if you don't give a shit about my lore or mm-hmm. the NPCs that I that I fill the city with or any of that stuff, you can take the tools that I am using to build all this stuff and build <clears> your <throat> own city and you know, you still get as much use out of the book as someone who wants to run it completely yeah. the way that I have laid it out. So are you doing uh do you have any sort of um mechanics like generators for like activity and encounters in the uh in the city um or in the in the wilderness, just like, wilderness or like cultist activities yeah just like thing, beyond or... beyond just necessarily one oh, or two yeah. thieves or whatever yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah so i've got um i have a whole ecosystem built around how the guard operates with basically how they escalate threats mm-hmm. i've got um daytime and nighttime encounter tables so that when you are walking around the city it's basically a hex crawl inside a city nice. so when you're walking around the city you roll on these he- you roll on these encounter tables and sometimes it's you know you run into two thieves you run into a monster but sometimes it's just you run into this eccentric character in the middle of the street or you you see uh you know the the guards being corrupt or you run into this a uh, crazy merchant who's trying to sell you snake oil or it's stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. And one thing in uh, his heinous harvest, the spell of follow adventure I'm doing, I'm particularly proud of how my roll tables ended up coming out. Um, right. I've been flaunting a little bit about my uh, D hundred hallucinations roll chart. I think it's the <laughs> nice. best hallucination roll chart on the market bar none. It um, is. I have some really fun ones like with my wilderness encounters as you're going cross from hex to hex. Not only do I have, you know, obviously you'll find the monsters and stuff, but I want you to roll along with it. I have little minor kind of scenic things so Uh depending on the hex type you're at it has kind of a breakdown from there of different uh various scenes you might see in that kind of a locale um and then another one i really like is i think it's a d20 i have a bunch of very individualized roll chart for the village of Dripwater. So I have mm-hmm. one of just what it's called Dripwater junk, but it's all kinds of weird hodgepodge things like, you know, a raven in a jar, weird flute made of local bones and animal bird, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, and then I have a really fun one of, uh, you know, what what are these, uh, the creepy crawlers is what I call the villagers of Dripwater. What are the creepy yeah. crawlers up to at this point in time where I got to be very inventive on like, what would a bunch of hallucinating crack had murderers be yeah. doing because it's like the whole thing is they're like hiding in the walls they're like peeking out at chimneys like almost comical in a way of how mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh uncomfortable they are <laughs> so nice. is there for the gm is there <clears throat> um like lore and information regarding the god or gods or whatever foul entity these this sort of like hills have I these these chud cultists are worshiping, uh, so that I so that you know okay you you finish the adventure right but mm-hmm. you know uh, you know true horror like that never really dies right? yeah. how it's gonna pop up somewhere else you know the, the blight continues elsewhere. Uh, yeah, most definitely. So um, I've definitely thought a lot about that. I've put a lot of thought into this going forward. Um, <clears throat> nice. One of the things that I'm particularly proud of is it's not necessarily a, a what we'll call a salvageable village, but a lot of the tools <laughs> that I've presented here are uh, things that can easily be trans, uh, what do I want to call it? popped into other kind of similar style adventures. Like a lot of the mm-hmm. monsters could easily be recycled, reused, um, mm-hmm. that kind of a thing. Um, I had a really good point, but I'm 
train is going in the wrong direction. It's all good. It, it will. It will come back. Many to you such cases. And, uh, mm, right. It happens all the time. It's fucking awful. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but the backstory and lore. That's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I definitely have plenty. It's uh, this is a quite the horrific tale. Not just because of the creatures you're fighting, but the why you're fighting them. I think Ryan mm -hmm. could attest to this that the actual evils that you're going to be fighting in this adventure. Um, you know, sure you'll get gold and glory and that kind of thing at the end. But the real thing is you're going to want to fight them. It's so undeniably atrocious that you are mm -hmm. a bad person if you leave this unclean. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It is that level of grotesquery. Yeah. Um, so I basically, See, I yeah. That is, is that yeah. is way more interesting to me than like the Golden Glory thing. I get it's it's a good game incentive. I get that. But I find motivations like that and the right is so much more interesting to play and the things that grow out of that are, are more interesting we were talking we we had a very short run uh cyberpunk game well it, we, it went three sessions before um our schedules and people's health got in the way i think but the uh like you didn't even give us experience <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, right. we were like we were just like oh man i can't wait to play again like, this is awesome. yeah like, none of us were, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah you get gold but like i'm much more interested in like what's the f like fucking evil vile thing that right. to, like that must be destroyed <laughs> yeah know? and I is would there do a compelling free, reason yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> That's and, exactly the vibe I want to aspire. <laughs> th this is one of the things that I think really makes Wonky's work stand out. Uh, you, like someone in the chat mentioned uh, Morkborg, which has been kind of my uh, mm -hmm. my favorite thing to dunk on recently, <laughs> and being like fake dark fantasy. There's a lot of stuff out there that's either safe, edgy, or uh, edgy oh, for God, its own sake. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I hate safe edgy. <laughs> safe edgy is the worst. But even you know, even you you look at something like Lamentations of the Flame Princess, and sometimes <laughs> you you see you're just like, okay, this is just like you're being gross just to be like, look at me, I'm I'm opening my butthole in front of people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. What what Wong typical does, improv comedy moment? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. What what Wonky does with the like edgy stuff that happens, the the grody, creepy, gross things that you run across in uh, his heinous harvest, it's it's supposed to elicit that reaction from you, and then your reaction is supposed to be, well, I'm going to kill that thing with fire and purge the yeah. evil from this land, sure. <clears throat> because you know at the end of the day the the point of exposing people to this dark gross weirdness is to give them the reaction of this needs to go away and we need to overcome this evil right. and like restore good to this world and so th that's really what i feel like wonky has done a great job of bringing out in his adventures is this sense of yes it's dark it's gross but you need to man up and deal with it and like yeah. purge this right. forever the, yes. yeah, the actual call to adventure exactly, exactly. <clears throat> right yeah, I, I mean that's it. the that's the thematic purpose of of a cult yeah and this yeah. actually this this is a good a good segue Ooh. That you kind of hinted at, at least unless you had something you wanted to bring up nope. real quick. Go ahead. Um, more than anything else on the Kickstarter page, what was most interesting to me is you have a note, I think towards the bottom, some you know, somewhere after you talked about uh Villafalo and, and Nighthaven, this this notion of of a more fundamental artistic vision uh, and an artistic philosophy. And a a commitment and a correct commitment uh, that uh, you know, creative works and and sort of uh, fantasy and and uh, you know this thing of ours, right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, is should it should have a like a more vitalistic, yeah, pro human. Um, like pro life in the not politicized yeah no uh, no but but like life affirming life like, affirming yeah. kind of um 
like angle to it. So I'm curious what you guys meant by that and how how you're like making that come forward in in guts and glory. Yeah. Um I think one of the big things that makes fantasy as a genre feel very stale to me nowadays is that a big thing that rang true with mythology for thousands of years is that it's about overcoming struggles and the persistence of the human spirit against all odds, tooth and nail, doing whatever you had to. And oftentimes it isn't this envious position to be the good guy realistically it comes with a yes. lot of hardship Whoa. and sad yeah. sacrifice you know it's not this glamorous thing and so i always fall back to like people seem to have forgotten that swords are made for cutting human meat and not to make you look like an adventurer right you know and so i think i'm really trying to return to what is this genre trying to tell us what are we trying to do here beyond just look like heroes what does it mean to be a hero because if you can emulate that through role playing i think that's just good experience for you as a person to be a better hero in real everyday life you know because there are really nasty things that come at us throughout this wild human experience we're in and uh we're very underprepared as a culture to deal with a lot of it i see a lot of let's call them demons wreaking the people around me and friends <laughs> yeah. and everyone I knew growing up with like we're wrecked people yeah, <laughs> yeah um so let's fight it <laughs> Matt can you can you bring up uh sure. the image a paladin in hell by David Sutherland oh sure oh. yeah look it up gotcha. I, this is like this is an image that everyone's familiar with but oh I, yeah I'm I know which one you're talking about asking yeah. for uh for you to bring this up for a very specific reason yeah um this image to me says more about what fantasy should be than pretty much any other image in all of fantasy artwork. You have this one guy by himself standing against all odds. We have you know, no idea how long this paladin has been in hell. You can see he's surrounded by demons and he's continuing to fight. And you know for a fact that this man is going to continue swinging that sword until he absolutely cannot anymore. And he's probably going to die down there. Yeah. All right. He's right. not looking for anyone to save him. He's there on his own kicking ass. Yeah. yeah he's, th there, he's there to eradicate yeah. that which must be eradicated. Right. Yeah. He is going to vanquish evil at all costs. That That is guts and glory. That image right there is the ethos of guts and glory. And you can also see it when you read something like Berserk, which yeah. uh, Wonky and I have been bonding over uh, very recently as I very new. I was the one who got him to read it. <laughs> right. I haven't read uh, Berserk. I've watched about a hundred times the <laughs> uh, Zod scene uh, <laughs> of the 1997 anime and then I showed Nick the Eclipse because he's yeah. like, what the fuck is Berserk? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a... Uh, and that's a, that's a hell of a way to start. That's yeah. <laughs> it's the important points. <laughs> that's <laughs> like having your first drug be heroin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I, I, yeah, I absolutely love that, that picture. It's so fucking good. Yeah. It really is. Literally iconic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you guys, yeah. okay. So what, what do you get if you back this? Like, obviously you get PDFs. Everybody gets PDFs, but uh, what's uh, it looked like you had some sort of a special limited edition possibility. What tell oh, us about that? Yeah, so uh, you know the the two kind of lowest levels, the easiest points of entry for people are the the digital edition and then the POD plus PDF. Uh, like you mm. said, everyone kind of offers that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a limited number of these limited edition. Right now, it's a soft cover. If we get to a certain uh, dollar amount and stretch goals, it'll be a hard cover edition of the game. Nice. Um, this is the only time you will see this cover uh, will be through this campaign and then whatever we have left over from it. Uh, once we run out, we like we're done. No more of this cover. Mm -hmm. um, in Never addition to that, again, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In addition to that, now uh, we are offering poster prints of the His Heinous Harvest cover and then the cover for Corpse Walk, which will be revealed 
tomorrow can... morning. Yep, I'm tomorrow so morning close. This is my first hundred hour piece of the year. Sorry, it's taking so long, Ryan. Oh, it's all good, man. I meant to bring that up. <laughs> it's all Much good. love. <laughs> but it's kicking ass, dude. You're gonna mind yeah. melted. Sorry, for... art is really good. Nice. Um, Thank you. And then the, <laughs> the other thing that people are now getting because we've hit this threshold now mm -hmm. um, at the four thousand dollar level, uh, the hex maps of uh, Bella follows, uh, it, it's the village of Dripwater map, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it's actually the region leading you to the village of Dripwater. Gotcha. It's the entire, uh, Southern Heartland okay. Sea region. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it is the, the area hex crawl. And then I'm going to have a map of the village, of course, and stuff like that, but no. And there's right. also going to be a poster map of the gate district of Nighthaven. And that's what you'll get with the, uh, the limited edition, Mm -hmm. And then we also have a tier called No Guts, No Glory. There's only seven of these left. And what comes with this is uh, not only do you get the uh, the poster maps and everything that we just mentioned, you also now get uh, your face, oh, your nice. likeness drawn <clears throat> into either Bellafollow or Nighthaven uh, in the role of your choosing. So if you want to be some kind of suffering villager or someone getting arrested by a guardsman, or there's even a, a picture not in the role of people's choosing. That yeah. is, that is speculative. No, 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 not in the oh. role of, people. not, in the role, of people. not okay. in the role. I'm yeah. not doing a bunch of commissions for people. All you right. will be fit into the, yeah, very different. Yeah. My, you you can't choose what, which setting you want to be drawn into. That's though. totally fine. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you will that's, be that's turned good. into a monster or a hillbilly cultist if you're in Bella Follow. Let's just <laughs> Hell <be> real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're probably gonna get arrested in Night Haven. <laughs> At nice. best. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Love it. Oh, and then okay. everything I do for the book besides the covers pretty much is going to be available as stock artwork because I think, um, you know, a lot of people want to oh, support yeah, yeah. human artists in this whole AI age. I have no yeah. real opinion on it at the end of the day, but I want people to have, you know, cool artwork available and I want to make it cheap. And so let's do a huge bundle, everything I do for the book. And there you are. Nice. And awesome. that is included with the $30 soft cover book. So if you just buy a copy of the book, you get the stock art as well. Oh, cool. cool. Okay. Okay, yes. so if you do the $30, $30 yep. limited edition. If you get awesome. one of the 250 books. Yep. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. That is awesome. Right? Because yeah. then, you know, make your own drip water scenarios. Use the same art. Republish it. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and nice. the art, yeah, like it, like all of this is really, really high quality stuff. Yeah, I really and, like this. Um, I like that symbol. Very, like, like you say, Cthulhu, Dagon vibes. That yeah. altar piece. Yeah. All of this, yeah, all of this is really good. So that's really, really cool, especially that you're you're releasing that art. Um, and yeah, the thing, I, like, I don't have anything against AI art, but it's uh, it's never as good as human art. It's never as good as good human art. That's yeah, what that's I'll say. true. It's that's much better. It's better than bad human. Yeah, art. it's much better than <laughs> the vast majority of like the Tumblr artists. It's morally, yeah, yeah, it's morally superior. Yeah, than bad <laughs> <laughs> I'm so with you. Yeah, yeah, but it's just it's, it's never it's never as good. So it's it's awesome, and this is a, a cool position that you guys are in. Is that one of you uh, at least is an artist, the artist, and, and being able to produce all of it. Uh, on your awesome. own, even though it's a, a massive undertaking for the the amount of work yeah. that it takes, you at least you're not ever going to be reliant on some person yeah. not delivering stuff. Or and it's gonna know, it's gonna maintain a unified style. Yeah, which is awesome. It's true. And that's yeah. something that really excites me as the oh, artist really for kind of both worlds that, now, because Bella follows my dream world, literally mm -hmm. my dream or nightmare world, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And then being able to kind of kind of adopt ish the visuals for Ryan's night Haven setting. It's really yeah. cool because it allows me to explore very different branches. And I'm excited to see how they diverge and just turn into very different entities. Cause I imagine a lot of overlap initially, but yeah. as you know, we expand things and keep building and building. I imagine they're going to have such visually distinct design languages going on and all yeah. that kind of thing. Hmm. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. we got some super chats here. Oh, hold on. Let's You're going to have to read this one because the camera's in my way. Good night, gents. Past my bedtime. Uh, keep making good games. Tired of the Fisher Price garbage coming out of the mainstream. Here's some Canadian doubloons for the road. Thank you. Sylvan Laflesh. Sylvan. Ten dollars Canadian. Thank you. All right. I'm going Go Sylvan. Little Tykes Nighthaven off of my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then 
Jack McCarthy five dollars super sticker. I don't know what sticker you gave us, but thank you. <laughs> we <laughs> love we it. definitely appreciate mm -hmm. it. Nice. Um, yeah, this yeah. is this is really cool stuff. Go ahead. No, I'm just I'm <clears throat> I'm interested to see how you're able to. What would you say? Like you you mentioned having like technomancy and biopunk stuff. Yeah. Down oh, the yeah. line. And so we have the art as it is right now for Bella Fallo and for Nighthaven. And you have these other things that are in a world which would, or the same yeah. world, which would imply some kind of unification of style, but that's very yeah. different. So I'm, I'm really looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing. I like the term like. weird fiction because it does, it's not landlocked into genre specifically. Mm -hmm. Of course, D and D style stuff's my favorite, but it's kind of a little bit of a closed, you know, kind of uh borders when you think about it like that but when you uh -huh. kind of bring in that weird fiction term it really opens it up to where can you go with this because mm -hmm. yeah. i mean reality bella follow though it looks like a black powder world setting it's incredibly hardcore sci-fi it's ruled by the balzakin empire which are these like undead robot things you know deep underground <laughs> Hell yeah. and yeah. so that's basically what the whole next arc i'm doing chaos as one faction and then kind of the undead as techno undead nice. but they don't like each other so they're getting entirely different book series <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice but that's going to be harder to draw realistically doing super yeah. industrial machinist stuff and you know i am learning on the job i'm not like i haven't been drawing my entire life this is just what i want to do with my life and so uh -huh. i, I kind of made logical steps to make it happen as best possible yeah well i mean if if what's on this page is indicative of what the final product's going to look like it's going to be awesome yeah it's going to be um, awesome Thank is you. this uh going to be a uh, black and white or is there going to be color Black and white interior. Black, black and white. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. I do like black and white a lot. Black and white is uh, great. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly in grayscale, as you've mm -hmm. been seeing up and down throughout the page. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is really, really good stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. this is so assuring to hear. Thank you guys, yeah. honestly, on all the compliments. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, well, I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, you're completely right about, um, you know, the lack of vision that sort of exists and out there and anyone who's just going for it <clears throat> unapologetically it has to be unapologetic yes mm -hmm. um that in and of itself is going to have merit if you had nothing else that already and you you do have you know, much more than than just that but uh, it is so refreshing and it's it's um what would you say i mean like like from like a a buyer standpoint, you, know, you talk about the reassurance, you know, that, that we like it and it, it seems cool and it does, but that's such a breath of fresh air from like yeah. a consumer perspective as well to see something and someone with a vision. You know, we talk, we've talked ad nauseum and, about and also, the ring of fire and that's yeah. such a bizarre. That's, vision. It's like yeah. only personality. <laughs> it's like the only thing. It's just the, the mm. author's, just spirit haunting yeah. that book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but the other thing is, it's like I I also just like the fact that there is, um, you're you're showing this awful, disgusting evil. Yeah, and you're not apologizing that it is evil. Yeah, it's like, supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Yeah, no, yeah. no, but that but yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like so much of stuff where it's like people will present like twisted stuff, and they're like, "Isn't that good? Isn't that good?" Yeah. There's no difference between like the glorification <laughs> yeah. of yeah. evil. Yeah, it's like, yeah. where everything's I'm just the same. Good, every, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hate that so much. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, yeah this is, this is Everyone's cool. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this great? <laughs> mm. right, I love it. Here. Hell yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. Let me well, see. I'm glad you guys are already smashing through. So yeah, me too. I and did not expect to get this far at all, let alone and how how many like a... days are left? Oh yeah, sorry, I just I just killed that. Thing. We've got uh, 13 days to go, so just oh, under yeah. two weeks. 
Yeah, we're right. at like half the way there. Yeah, nice. Uh, okay, cool. So you guys will uh, probably hit like a a, a couple nice... more stretch goals. Yeah, so nice, nice if we could, horses. if we could break that six thousand dollar goal, that would be amazing. Honestly, because yeah. since we started talking about this idea, we've been like, let's do hardback, let's do hardback. Saw the price of hardback. Let's go soft cover. Let's go yeah. soft cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been looking at a, a lot of different printers. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this turns out with you guys and what your experience is. Because uh, yeah. I know Basic Experts <laughs> using one, and our friend Kyle is using a different one. I think you guys are using a third option. Mm. Um, which, by the way, I, uh, I think the printer that you uh, you are going through, at least the one that Ryan told me, our friend wrote uh, the Epic of Dreams and did offset print oh, through it. Wow. Oh, nice! It is another game dripping with personality. Yeah, another. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's a it is a very very uh, good physical product so beautiful the looking. physical yeah. integrity of the book is uh excellent and i think you can look yeah the production that. value is yeah production is value is awesome the, excellent. uh paper looks great the blacks are deep so the art's gonna look amazing like yeah. it's uh it'll it'll be good Heck yep. yeah that's very reassuring honestly because yeah. that's one thing you know this is our first project not let alone together just our first projects mm -hmm. so we're kind of uh -huh. going into so much of this blind you know like yeah i've been working in the industry for a good while now as an artist so i have all these good resources and stuff but like you were saying you know everyone has their own printer their own editor where do you go for these things I know. so seeing that you have an example of at least the direction we i think are heading that's reassuring yeah we've got I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting to see what makuahito looks like the the um the fancy edition from the basic expert. yeah so I got the, mm -hmm. you know i got the print on demand one here somewhere but um because then we'll have examples from all three of the big options yeah, basically then, you yeah, know <laughs> right. print ninja <laughs> mixam and whoever i'm not sure what basic experts using i don't um, know i don't recall i think, is, he, I think does he not use them. lulu he, um, might he does when he sells through his website, but for the it's oh, for the yeah, offset yeah. of uh, that's right. Makuhito is yep. going through a different different service. Hmm. Um, but I'm still waiting on that as well. Print, so. print Ninja is a good option for, for those oh, of you okay. looking to, mm -hmm. to to do offset as well. Um, Hell yeah! And uh, I think actually Kyle Griswold was in the chat earlier. We missed him. We should actually probably check in on the chat and see yeah, if yeah, they're yeah. Let's see. Yeah, what are that, the people got know, to say about us? And, <laughs> well, it's it's really more important to find out what their thoughts on the Council of Nicaea is. Yes, yes, yes. That was where one <laughs> of our <laughs> last... Yeah, we, we had, while we were talking RPGs, our chat often ends up debating uh, Vatican II and other weird That's stuff wonderful. in the chat. <laughs> These are my people. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna start back up uh, towards the, the. Oh wait, did we get another one? If, oh, no, if you oh, need one that's on screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you need to kick off the like religious esoterica debate in your chat again, I'll just go ahead and let it slip right now, guys. I am a five point Calvinist, so a Calvinist. <laughs> wow, <laughs> damn, wow, Protestant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you believe in predestination? Yes, I do. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> nice. I've never actually met a real Calvinist in real life. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah. Neither Not have I. I. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer. Yeah. Everyone else going yeah. to hell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 4E wasn't under the OGL, which was a big part of the pushback on it. The GSL was workable after a revision, but a lot of people were very mad by that point and didn't ah, care. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. See that. Thank you, John. If you're still history repeats still. itself. Once yeah, exactly. Again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we made that mistake once. I wonder if we could get away Do with it again. It again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Lancer, Strike, Amethyst, and a few other games are very much 4E inheritors. 13th Age is sort of like 4E. One of the lead designers worked on it, and it's lovely in its own way. I'm actually it's interesting. Lancer is a mech. Game. I know that it's a mech yeah. game, it's which like is totally different genre. Yeah. So it's but you're you're in mechs like fighting giant monsters. Like it's like okay. get into Ava Shinji, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, I do like mechs. I like mechs a lot. Um, if you guys see anything interesting in the chat as well, you can uh, feel free to call us out. But we're just going to kind of uh, catch up with some guys here. For I'm Lancer down for the ride. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Lancer is fucking rad. It's hilarious how many people. Who froth at the mouth when you mention 4E in a five minor rate? <laughs> yes, I've been loving it. Yeah. Uh, I, I do know some it. staunch 4E defenders, though. Um, oh, it, okay. If you ever have a conversation with Gelatinous Rube, 
Oh, he, we have had several. <laughs> that does not surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited for a moment. <laughs> uh, SBD, Matt Colville liking 4E makes him one step closer to me. It's the only reason he doesn't look like his smack actually designer. <laughs> yeah. the guy well, has... we've said it before. Like that, like the MCDM game seems to be catering to Yeah, like the, the, the 4E people who are very and, underserved. In yeah, the and have right been now. for like Years? years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, I think what people are going to find, and I'm I'm opening up the the Matt Colville can of worms again, which last time <clears throat> I did this, uh, made a few people angry. Um, <laughs> Matt Colville <laughs> has a yes, Broken Blade, Reformed Christianity is correct. <laughs> um, Matt uh, Matt Colville. <sighs> has a very long history of over-promising and under-delivering. When you look oh, at his track yeah. record as, like, it, when you look at his video game track record, the biggest game that he has his name attached to is Evolve. Evolve was nothing but wasted potential. I don't even yeah. know what that is. That's a video game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, like, the, the whole promise was you're going to feel like you're playing through Predator. You're going to be a hunter, fighting this monster that's you know learning new abilities and adapting to your play style but and when you play the game you really don't get that at all like you get it a little bit was that that asymmetrical like arena game yes that was like hot for like three weeks and yeah yeah okay i think i i vaguely remember <laughs> what that game was <laughs> i did not play it video games are hard my, yeah, yeah, my thing is, like, the MCDM RPG, I just don't care, because it's not something I, like, the... I didn't back it. I have no interest have to, in backing yeah. it. It's um, not my it's not my cup of tea. Like, I know this is not a game for me, um, but the design videos that... But we, there's, there's no way it's going to be successful. That doesn't mean it, a product isn't going to come out. A product will come out, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. won't be... Mm. We, we've talked about this before. Like, yeah. if you're... If you still haven't designed whatever that means for uh, a tabletop role playing game, more than more, more than, than level one, first level, yeah. and you're on like version thirty four, yeah, already. This was crazy. Yeah, like, we yeah. we watched you're one of these your videos on stream, mind. and he was <laughs> yeah, the guy was like, yeah, uh, <laughs> we've been working on this for two and a half years, yeah, and we've only designed and we've gotten level one. And we've made no progress. <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah. we were like, what? <laughs> the, like <laughs> the thing that got me. He he's going on this rant, and this was kind of like a side thing in one of his videos, but he's going on this rant about weapons. And he goes, Well, it's actually your muscles that do the damage, not the weapon oh itself. And I'm like, All right, yeah, dude. It's, so it's actually the neurons in your yeah. <laughs> G give a toddler a stick and let them hit you with it, and then give that same toddler a machete. Yeah. And see if you're willing to let them hit you with it. The yeah. the blade does something. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. The weapon <laughs> that was like someone, this is a some stupid shitlib comic, was like, uh, you know, they say guns don't kill people. He's like, I maybe, but I th I think the gun helped. Same thing here. Yeah. You know? like, That's good. Yeah. It's like oh my God. Yeah, getting hit with a with a hatchet and getting hit with, you know, a broomstick or a broom handle are two yeah. completely different things. Like yeah. the, the weapon absolutely matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And yes, of course, if you're stronger, you can do more damage with it. But the weapon yeah. itself is also gonna really fuck you up. But like, yeah. why are you thinking about it this? Deeply. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is the wrong thing to be focusing on. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah. his whole thing is he he wants like an assassin with a dagger to be able to do just as much damage as a fighter with a long sword, but that's why? just an this incorrect thing, way like to think why. about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I want everybody to be like an MMO uh, to play like an MMO, which isn't even the case. Like different classes and MMOs will do do different different, da yeah, yeah, different yeah. damage and do yeah, different yeah. things. It's like I want everyone. I want this game to be like an MMO, but if we were playing an MMO where everyone was the tank healer and DPS, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no vision yeah. whatsoever, except I have this cinematic. This, yeah, I have, I have this moronic 
mouth breathing conception of like <laughs> cool and fun yeah which just means everyone do all thing all time yeah which <laughs> means nothing but it, it also it's one of these things where like they're talking about uh like imposing conditions on people and everything like that and i hate conditions in games mm -hmm. i absolutely hate them because i don't want to have to keep <clears throat> track of them yeah like, it's 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 a mental load something that is done so much better by a fucking computer right this is a thing for a video game yeah i have the status effect the computer is calculating the timer right. and the and the, the damage track and if it's, and if it's second. one or two status effects that's fine but when you're like everybody has all these abilities they all do yeah. this the conditions mm -hmm. interact with each other this way it's just like let's stack it like a mm -hmm. like it's yeah. a video game it's like holy shit just play a video game yeah it's I better at that I don't mind it as much, but there is a point at which it becomes way too ridiculous and too much to take care of. Right. It's like, a, oh God, I fucking yeah, again, it. like imagine and it's not just at... about like, oh, it's slowing the game down. It's just literally I'm just like, this isn't fun. Even from a game perspective, this is right. not fun. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like imagine looking at at the UI for an MMO or an RPG and like all all the buffs and debuffs on you, like three bars of debuffs yeah. buffs and debuffs. Like, <laughs> all right, let me let me get like the the, the almanac out. Or, right. Let's you know, do this round by round. Let's do this round by round. Yeah. Okay. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. That's my that's my literal vision of hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's extend the hit point. So like, it's it's not like you have ten hit points or even a hundred hit points. You have fifteen hundred. Everybody's fifteen hundred hit points. So you have like a large enough scale to accurately measure the yeah. ticks. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> Awful. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. it's definitely not my sort of game. I get that there's some people that want to do that sort of stuff, but I just I don't. They think they. I have do. I have zero interest yeah. in it. Yeah. Holy uh, shit! Show the hallucination table so we can judge him. Yeah, it says space it's on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you say salvage the village, I hear burn it down. Me yeah. too, dude. Okay, cool. Yeah. Same, page. same page. It's the, it's the same picture. Yeah. <laughs> Hallucinations based heavily on personal experience. You know it. Yeah, mushroom cultist, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention that I ate too much fried chicken? Brother Grognard, if this is in regard to some other conversation, we have missed it, so I apologize. Uh, just, when he came in, he said that he had had too much fried chicken, which uh, uh. And someone else asks, how much is too much? Mm -hmm. And I also want to know how much is too much. Like, are we talking you ate, like, half a chicken? Or, like, how much of a bucket did you eat? Like, Let's see. did he you make the fried chicken yourself? One leg, two breasts, a roll, some mac and cheese, mac and cheese, and, cheese. and several... Corn fritters. <laughs> I love my corn fritters. <laughs> you fat fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I'm really just jealous because I love fried chicken. W was this homemade fried chicken or was this procured from a restaurant? That's what I want to know. Safeway. I don't know, but it, but but thank you for the uh, public service announcement on your your chicken. We, we definitely <laughs> appreciate that. Oh, I think we got another. Super chat we did from Jack McCarthy for seven dollars and seventy seven cents. Oh, man. don't forget the like button, you like reprobate. That's one hundred percent. We got, got forty five people watching this video right now. I would love to see forty five likes. Absolutely. And if you're not subscribed and you're somehow watching this, please hit that subscribe button mm. for more excellent mm -hmm. content like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're reaching some of the other shit. We're talking Curse about Curse of Yig dessert. actually has a good point here about mm -hmm. uh, status <clears throat> effects. Uh, this is something that um, it's actually, it's not a role playing game, but Hero Clicks has something where you stack tokens uh, based on the uh, effects that have kind of impacted your uh, your characters and then also savage worlds has something similar where mm. you've got mm -hmm. status tokens that you stack up. So it, it, it's like, there, there's a couple ways to do it, but it, it can still get to be too much, especially if like you said, there's more than a few. Right. Oh, fair. 
the way I've found around it is uh, the games War Machine and Hordes produced by Privateer Press had these small little uh, dry erase made chits, I guess you could say. And they're really easy for just writing down simple small effects, but it kind of relies on miniature use. So it's not really a universal solution. Okay. But mm. it's the best I've seen as far as being able to handle that health, various other effects, that kind of thing. Because then it just keeps it very condensed as far as what you're dealing with. It's right next to the miniature you know who has what um but i agree with your point initially is that it just becomes too much to track and handle at some point or another you yeah know? yeah and it's not that i literally couldn't track it but i have i don't just, want to i have no desire i'm dming yeah. i have too much yeah. shit to do as it is i don't right. want to keep track of a bunch of mundane bullshit no yeah. <laughs> get out it's, of here <laughs> it's, that's the, the least interesting thing in a game to me <laughs> right. um, let's see here mm -hmm. burn the village down i had too much fried chicken uh, These are some quality comments. I like that. <laughs> Berserk is life affirming in the same way that Promethean and Changeling are. Bringing in the world of dark well, Chronicles I, of I, darkness. I, yeah. I haven't seen Berserk, so I wouldn't know. But certainly, Promethean is uh, is a life affirming game. Yeah, that no, is the point. You want to be human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean uh, guts. No, no. I, th I think Berserk is is life affirming. It guts is. is like struggling against these just horrifically impossible odds. Yeah. and never. Giving up and, and you know having the this strength and eventually you know the magical suit of armor that uh, allows him to fight the demons. Okay, and like that. Well, he sounds based then. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a man who is marked for eternal torment, basically uh, prolonging his time on Earth through sheer stubbornness. Is yeah. the hmm. the general premise of Berserk without getting into spoiler <clears throat> territory? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Question for Wonky. Oh, How did yeah. you get started with RPGs, games, and editions? You gotta go back and back, watch yeah. the beginning of the interview, <laughs> yeah. because well, that's the first thing we covered. Fourth Head uh, Pathfinder DCC OSR. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> Chad move. Let's see here. And for Ryan. Yep, we covered all that at the beginning. Yep. We had a, a war gamer and a theater kid. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Loser. <laughs> I'm just he yeah. okay, got better as did I. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Even the appendix N of D and D could be classified. Oh yeah. As weird. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It is. It Half was way more back there. in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Dying and, Earth, especially. And if you look at our, uh, thank you. We yes. Back th thank you for backing mm -hmm. that. Nice. If you look in the About Guts and Glory game section, we call out several appendix N authors. I mean, obviously. With my background, for those of you who don't know, I am distantly related to Robert E. Howard. Mm -hmm. um, nice. So the, uh, he's an influence, as is uh, Lovecraft, uh, Clark Ashton Smith. Uh, Burroughs is actually a recent one for me. I'm, I'm going through Burroughs right now and oh, so good. seeing a lot of like I started with Tarzan. So I'm seeing mm -hmm. a lot of the. Uh, right themes that he pulls out and and how they kind of interact with what you know howard was doing and what lovecraft was doing at the same time and it's really interesting to see all these things that uh influenced what DD is now have you yeah. delved into clark ashton smith at all yet lately not not as much as i should have i'm excited I, I for you to, to take that delve yeah i, I need to take the hyperborea plunge <laughs> i need to i just need to sit down and finish the rest of the conan stories because i got about 50 percent of the way through them yeah. i have the like the full collection of them mm -hmm. um and i don't know if i want to go to vance after that or maybe paul anderson because everyone vance. has said that that three hearts and three lions is amazing three hearts and three lions is very good Va vance is I, he does a lot of good world building vance is a little strange to read Mm -hmm. it's yeah, very like it, it's, it's more about those... the world than the characters yeah the characters are interesting especially like you know kugel and rialto but it's more the the world i think at least for me mm -hmm. uh that's that's evocative there the the biggest reason to read vance is uh to understand D, &D magic on a deeper level 
I don't know if I'd agree with that. I think Vance has a lot of credibility in his own right. He just can't be taken with the same gravity as other fantasy authors. I view Jack Vance as someone blowing a giant raspberry at the fantasy genre, <laughs> but it's still really nice, you know? <laughs> like, I even named my cat Google, so. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not fair of me to say that then. I just know you don't like dying early. It's such a weird thing because, <laughs> like, everybody knows. The D and D magic is Vancey and magic, and that Vancey and magic is from Jack Vance's Dying Earth, and it's like I get it, I. But like, if I was reading, uh, yeah, the Dying Earth, and someone asked me to mechanically implement that magic system, the D and D magic system is not what I would come up with. Agreed. It makes it makes no sense. Like, yeah, I get it. You're. You the characters in the spells. world are memorizing yeah. things. <laughs> like, where did you come up with the spell slots? And, like, there's no none of the evocative flair of Vance in the D&D yeah. magic system at yeah. all. Maybe like, in first edition? Did you? I, I haven't, outside of some of the stuff in DMG, but. I mean, uh, I haven't played, I haven't played first edition, but, like, it's just weird. I wouldn't, yeah. I I, I don't know how, what I would do mechanically if you asked me to translate it. I think I would just, I I would, yeah, I don't know what I would do, but it would not look like D&D. &D. Yeah. And to, and to call the D&D &D magic system Vancean seems like a heavy stretch to me. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah, like, I'm with you wholeheartedly. Oh shit, Wonky, if you do the sepia thing for chaos, you could totally do a different filter color for the undead. Pink and teal, baby. Me, yeah, mm. Remind me of the Chronicles of Darkness <laughs> line and all the art being red, etc. We're on the I same agree. page. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nathaniel. Nathaniel? Nathaniel? Yeah, Nathaniel. I'm with you. Nathaniel. Yeah. I got you, brother. <clears throat> and yes, Broken yes. Blade, glorification of evil is, is gross. gross. And definitionally evil. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, ballpark of how long you worked on developing this with the purpose of publishing it in earnest? Uh, Guts and Glory Ooh. as a project in whole? Mm -hmm. or... Yeah. Uh, I've been planning oh, the, on... Yeah, and what, and what would be the timeline for release as well? Uh, right. I've been planning on writing adventures for half a decade at this point. I've just finally gotten the courage to do it and now have a companion and we kind of cover both each other's skill gaps. Mm -hmm. Um so maybe like October? I don't know. Uh, something like that. Ryan, do you know when we start talking about Guts and Glory? Yeah, we started, it was after North Texas. It was sometime around like September, October. Uh, we got pulled into a meeting with uh, the immensely talented and influential Jim Wampler. And... He told us after the, the first time we had or the first time I had wonky on uh, Rolling Bones, he told us, he said, you know, I don't know what this is going to be, but the two mm -hmm. of you need to be working on what the future of role playing games will look like. And you need nice. to start doing something. And so we had a couple meetings and out of this challenge issued to us from our own personal wizard, <laughs> we uh came up with this idea of guts and glory nice nice that's awesome you had a literal wizard send you on a quest that's a <laughs> yeah good, uh, yeah, yeah i agree with that wizard autobiographical <laughs> we have another calvinist orthodox will protestant switching to greek or greek orthodox oh you gotta submit to rome man <laughs> there's nothing to debate about the vatican <laughs> about <Vatican II> <laughs> Tell, tell that to Buckwack. Uh, or actually, no, he'd be on your side. He thought that. Yeah, he would be. He on said your... Vatican II is based. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, please plug the Kickstarter details again. Did I miss it somewhere? It's in the video description. Uh, so if you close the live chat yeah. and just look at the description, the link to the Kickstarter, to Ryan's YouTube channel, and to the Wonky's Patre uh, Patreon should all be there for you. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to well, answer like one of, no. <laughs> <laughs> to, to answer one of Jack McCarthy's other questions, um, if this is your first Kickstarter, you know I'd be delighted if you decided to to yeah, make it. Absolutely, absolutely yeah, it absolutely should be. Obviously, it should be your, your first Kickstarter. I think uh, I saw Primeval Fantasy said he backed it. Yes, yeah. he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that. I had that highlighted. But oh, okay. I did not want to interrupt. Yes. 
yeah. just to read, you know, our filthy audience's chats. <laughs> <laughs> Peasants. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's all good. We, we like to we like to have a, a healthy antagonism with the chat. Yeah. I uh, love they, banter. It's so, so relaxing being here, and like this is a comfortable yeah. environment. <laughs> Thank you guys. For it's great because we don't have any midwits in, in our in our live stream audience. We like we have people that are in many cases much funnier than us. Yes, <laughs> so right. like, they're very clever. So this is golden. Uh, I don't have to put the yeah. professional mask on and like, no. oh, let me tell you about evil. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've got we've only got high quality. Uh, uh, big brains here basically Absolutely. i love it it's the midwit brains. filter <laughs> yes uh it's my psychic mental energy that does the damage uh, Me too, bro. talking of, uh, talking about mcdm it's oh, not yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. the weapon it's my arm it's the neurons <laughs> <laughs> it's the what? macronutrients <laughs> <laughs> weapons are force multipliers you see, at the beginning of time, God rolled a D8, and that is yeah. what you were predestined to do yeah. for damage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Evolve had an incredibly interesting premise, but essentially failed on most of the execution. Monsters would just run around to avoid the players, not to mention egregious <laughs> microtransactions. Oh, uh -huh. man. Legacy I of success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we caught up there. Bushes in Austin was from was the fried chicken. Oh, I, I have not been there. I have not been there either. Hmm, we'll have to try it out. Oh, if well then, Bush, uh, if you're in Austin, Brother Grognard, next Wednesday, Emerald yes. Tavern. No, what is it? Yeah, Emerald Tavern Games and Cafe. Games Emerald and... Games. It's either Emerald, Emerald Tavern whatever. or Emerald Dragon. It's the Dragon. game shop in North Austin. Uh, I think it's Emerald Emerald Tavern. Yeah, like Emerald Tavern it's... Games and Cafe. Yeah. Uh, Seven thirty p.m. Next Wednesday, we're doing a meetup in yes. person. So come, yes. come hang with us. Next Wednesday. Is that where you guys are located? Austin? Yes. yes. Heck yeah. We are, we are in Austin. Love it. Austin seems like a wonderful place to be. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. It's got, you know, it's got some drawbacks, but yeah. it's uh, I'm sure overall, I, I absolutely better than love. where I was living. Yeah, it's better than the, the <laughs> godforsaken Northeast. East Coast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Savage Worlds is cool. I like the system's flexibility and pacing. Mm. I hear a lot of good things. Never played it. Savage Worlds is a lot of fun. Savage Worlds was enjoyable to play in, primarily because Steve Fillmore, friend of, we should get, we got to oh, get yeah, him on. Oh yeah, 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 we should um, definitely have him on. Great GM, great guy. Um, did an excellent job running a supers game in Savage Worlds. I don't, I know that I would never run Savage Worlds. It's just not my style. Uh, mm -hmm. But for the right game. At the right duration, uh, I'm down with it. Yeah. Heck yeah. I am. Uh, oh, wait. We got another super chat here. Broken Blade, back to your project. Broken boys. Blade. Ooh, Hell yeah. Slaying, yeah. dude. Broken Blade it. is also uh, another excellent TTRPG creator. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Literally right here, his game, Streets of Peril, uh, yeah. which just oh, finished. No, it's uh, yeah, it's so really Streets good. Streets over Stormbird. Uh, uh, storms over storms Sternberg. over Sternberg. Oh, yeah, his, streets, the the streets are streets over. over <laughs> <laughs> Great title. Yeah, um, yeah, no, no, no. But he made this this awesome game, and the first source book just funded. Uh, so looking for, I got the PDF yeah. for it yeah, already, yeah, yeah. which um, I haven't delved into yet. Yeah. but I am super excited too. Um, and he's got a really good YouTube channel as well. Excellent. He, he talks channel. about uh, game design stuff and. He's oh, into Tehima, yeah. so like he can uh, definitely speak to you know my people. Weapons. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Heck <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Broken Blade, hit me up. Uh, off, me too. Like, <laughs> after after the show's done, hit me up and and we'll talk about bringing you on the show. I, I love talking about weapons and stuff like that. Oh yeah, no, he's a, he's a great great guest too. Yeah. We had, uh, had yeah, an awesome, awesome live stream with him. So I'll was, just uh, be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Great great stuff. Um, you see here. All right. Uh, but we had here Deadmar should asked earlier. Uh, just curious, anyone backing Tales of Argosa? I don't Looks know what great. that is. I have not heard of it. I'm looking it up. It's Brother Landon. Brother Landon the Pious. It is me. That's a character I played in Greg Gillespie. Oh, game. nice. <laughs> <Thanks>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and which, which game did uh, Greg Gillespie do? Uh, he Slayer. just wrote Dragon Slayer. He's the author of Barrow Maze, Forbidden Caverns of Arcadia, okay. a bunch of other uh, mega dungeons. Right, People were right, asking yeah. about Dragon Slayer. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. 
This there's is there's, there's so many fucking say. games out there now, though. There, yeah. <laughs> People are like, you gotta, you, you've heard of this one, right? You gotta check out this one. I'm like, I've yeah, that's one of the big on. reasons yeah. for writing systemless. I can't yeah. stand the flood of games coming out when 90% of them are trying to do the same goddamn thing using the same rule set as like yeah. a template. Yeah. It's like, I shouldn't pick you over anyone else when they're all compatible. I can't stand right. the game flood. It's, oh. Get me yeah, riled that's up. the and that's <laughs> kind of the thing we're looking at. Like for for some of our stuff is like existing systems that we just want to use off the shelf. First of all, because making a, a system from the ground up sounds really sounds hard. like hell to yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like hell. Um, but but also just being able to hook into an existing player base. Obviously, yes. a D twenty based thing is going to be the, the most widely accepted. But uh, for sure, you know we we like other there's tons of well. different systems and. But it's picking one that that actually that actually fits, fits the genre, the genre the, and the tone, the and tone. does what you want yeah. it to. Like RuneQuest right. and D and D play very differently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, we're still working on that stuff, but <laughs> and of course we have yes a project where you, something else something else that we're excited honest. about that we can't Ooh, actually talk nice. about yet. Um, if you like that kind of a... stuff, yeah, it's a the, it, it sucks because we can't talk about it. I don't want to bring it up too much. To that's you know, fair. That's fair. I stop uh, myself. <laughs> gag order shall be lifted. Soon, Keep your so secrets, you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, if you like that kind of stuff, play some MMO. Uh, must be talking about MCDM. Yeah. Uh, tracks all those status effects, buffs, debuffs. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that, this is the thing. Is like the uh, video games. When I say RPGs and video games are different. That's not a knock on video games. There's yeah, some video things games that are video great. Game, yeah, video games are awesome, things. and they do some things so much better than RPGs. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. like, why would you try to bring that into an RPG? Yeah, <laughs> without the computer, right. like, <laughs> it's the nature of the machine yeah. that is allowing that game <laughs> to do that thing so well, and it might not exactly fit in an RPG. Why are you so stupid? Mm. Right. Exactly. And it's like RPG element, uh, and, and there's things that RPGs can do that that video games can't. Which would be funny is that would be like uh, what was it the uh, was it the D and D what was that summit on uh, during the summer summertime uh, where all the controversy was going on because of the creators they were testing out the VTT oh yeah the new VTT oh the D and D creator know, summit but that yeah, would yeah, be yeah. that would be the the ultimate fuck you. To Watsi is to have the chuds rise up, because everyone was there with their laptops. But you just do like a land party. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> just playing quick on a. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Howard had the legendary lineage going. He is the main character now. Oh, you don't want me to be the main character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I read seven John Carter books after like. Or yep. you really notice it's the same story over and over again, but when you first dip, it's oh. great. Well, that's good because I only have one. Yeah. So <laughs> you just read it four times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I'm I right with it. him. <laughs> I love Vance's Baroque writing. Yeah. Clark Ashton Smith is a better writer than Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what are the mes metaphysical underpinnings? Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, Please discuss fancy, fancy and magic. magic. Mm. What are the metaphysical underpinnings of it? I think that's for you because you brought up. I don't. I mean, in Vance, in the Dying Earth, you know the the you know the metaphysical underpinnings are are such that it's it's sort of unclear. Well, it, I guess it, it it is very heavily implied. Magic isn't really magic. You have is it Clark Ashton, Ashton Smith who said. Uh, you know, like to su sufficiently advanced technology is in know. indistinguishable, or is it? It's not Smith. I know that quote though. The it's, most uh, annoying quote of all time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but that was uh, um, two thousand one, a Space Odyssey. Oh, um, Arthur C. Clarke. Oh, yeah, Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Stanley Kubrick had that quote, and um, your yeah, magic is basically this sort of hyper advanced, you know, giga mathematics. Who you know? Who knows? And you're you're cramming your mind full of like all the well, all of the like the probabilities yeah. and the equations it's like you're being hyper aware of all the circumstances such that if you if you make the right gesticulation and you say the the right word at the right tone you know 
the the geometry of physics and the probabilities of of everything you're like you know super focused <laughs> about it but you have to stay so focused most of your yeah. brain capacity Mm -hmm. Is filled right, with being which just is hyper why, aware of which like, is why you can you have to memorize it. you can only fit a certain yeah, amount exactly. of it in your head yeah yeah, yeah. which yep. would be so much funnier uh, if like you actually role played that out you're just like yeah <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. constantly <laughs> just a vein sticking on the side the side of your head just being irritable with people you're just trying yeah. to keep it together <laughs> <laughs> that'll be that'll be so uh, so much more evocative and hilarious like. Yeah. Uh, iteration of like a wizard and why they're <laughs> angry and l lunatics. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> In a lot of ways, Vancey and Magic is literally weaponized autism. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, it's exactly that. Like, <laughs> I can weigh all the angles. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh man jack mccarthy's trying to back it now but the app is bugging out on him uh -oh. hey for effort it's like christmas it's the thought that counts dude yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, patty's parlor's here <laughs> good to see you man uh supers is the one thing i don't think savage world does best the two-man exploding dice and pretty low toughness don't match up well in supers fights too many i've only played um savage worlds with uh in the super genre so mm -hmm. i I don't know how it stacks up against <clears throat> other genres, but I know Pulp Adventure is sort of the the penultimate one it tries to do. Right. Mm -hmm. We are starting our yeah. our supers game run by Nick uh, Prowlers and yeah. Paragons on, on Saturday. Saturday, not, yeah, Sunday, not Sunday, as was told many times it was going to be. On uh, Sunday. As told, <laughs> and the name of the chat is Sunday RPG. Sunday RPG. Yeah. RPG. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I, go ahead. <laughs> for for supers, I, I do like Savage Worlds for supers. I feel like it does kind of street level to mid level heroes best. Uh, but if we're talking that about like sense. favorite supers games, uh, I Ascendant uh, Alexander McCree's is <laughs> yeah. probably the top one. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, convinced that game's unplayable. Yeah, <laughs> unrunnable. <laughs> Unru the, unrunnable. Yeah. It's Not very unplayable. playable. Yeah, very playable. Yeah, the uh, the player facing mechanics are very simple. I <laughs> want to like it. It's back there somewhere. Yeah, right? I have it, I have it on the table. Here. I'll bring it. I'll be here. Yeah, I want, it, it I, is death by charts. <laughs> so if if you have you run ascended before, I haven't uh, had the chance to run it, but I okay, do. That's really, why. That's why yeah. he's saying that he oh, hasn't okay. run it before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is a very very thick book. Oh wow, it is. That's hefty. It's, it's a big uh, boy. It's awesome. Uh, I am. I. I am convinced i can run it and i want to i'm yeah. not sure if we'll like it that was the, thing. <laughs> the thing is like you have all of these charts that you need like you need the gm screen to run this game because yes. at any moment someone's going to use a power that's like affecting the density of something or <clears throat> you know the 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 weight or the the volume yeah. that all of these the volume, physical the weight, properties the speed yeah and so like the super metric point system works logarithmically so you know two points is you know twice as much as one or whatever uh, three is twice as right, much right, as two right. um and all of these tables that you have have benchmarks and it's for every type that you have it's like speed uh force density right. kinetic like force, everything density. kinetic force yeah. and all of the supermetric points that, uh they do have benchmarks for like okay this is the equivalent of like light speed light speed or like a you know oh. this is the the weight of a skyscraper so you can yeah. you can determine things fairly quickly but like our thing is like we've been we were looking at it like if i want this game to run and to flow i have to be thinking about like right i have to be the computer yeah <laughs> it's like it's so like running the game it's like coming up with the challenges it's like i'm gonna have to be sitting here yeah, just like scouring be, charts yeah. and like <laughs> all the Unless stuff, you're, stuff yeah. like Unless you're a mentat, like yeah, that, you drink the juice. right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I am, I, I want to give it a try because the thing is that the resolution mechanic is very simple. It's challenge rating versus your action rating right. or whatever. It's That's like, very uh, simple. Subtract those, mm -hmm. roll on a chart, see what you got. Yeah, like, but the only way I just can think to make this work, you, I think, are correct and and being clued in on this. <clears throat> Is the exact opposite to how I run things, right? Because that th I think the only way to run this is to like pre-measure all of the potential things that could happen, all the potential uh, potential obstacles, 
or challenges that are likely to arise which is, in a session. Which is in the game mastery mm -hmm. section of the book, how he recommends structuring yeah. an adventure is that you basically have a certain amount, you have a budget of supermetric points that you can allocate towards challenges and things like that, Yeah, which is not how I run a game. I don't all. run that way at all. That yeah. sounds yeah. very prep intense. It is prep yes. intense and that's, yeah. it. You, you couldn't run at zero prep. Leaves right. a little taste but that's how I like to run games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, right. It's, uh, yeah. Not not zero prep, but near zero prep. Mm. You know, like I I, I, I am, want the rule the rules to be again complex enough to accurately represent the world, but simple enough that I can interface with them. And because thing unexpected things are going to happen, the, uh, yeah, happen, the players are going to go off. I script. need to be able to. Yep. Okay, this challenge. This is now an XYZ yeah. challenge. Yeah. Right? Boom. And we keep moving. Right. I can't be measuring how many atoms are in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many moles. Are, uh... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's, and it's, yeah, it really is. That's the thing is like, I don't like, I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> first of all, I just don't want to prep. <laughs> like, I don't want to do it. But hopefully we can get uh, Alexander McCreese back on. We will. Yeah. No, he's, yeah. he, he, he can come back on, but it, I just, yeah. I hadn't read. He needs to open the our, book. our pineal gland. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to, to get it. Yeah, exactly. Mm, right. And, and, I'm, and I'm. Oh yeah, I, I'm gonna. I'm convinced to try it though. It's like I'm. I'm like I'm gonna run I'm this online. I'm happy to let you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna run this online. We're not gonna play it with our our group. We've got yeah. a game every week now, so we can't. Anyway. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do Lone Wolf Fists. Uh, what was the other stuff I was gonna run on here? Um, yeah. You're gonna have to run. Uh, RuneQuest for me at some point. Yeah, I want to run RuneQuest. I, oh, I want to run. I'd love to play I want to run. Yeah. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade. I want to run Promethean. Right. I want to run Shadows of Esterin. We got a yes. shit ton of things, but we yeah, need the right um, people. Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's shit at least one other weird game that I want to run, but uh, Ascendant is one of them. But top of the list is definitely Lone Wolf Fist. That's been yeah. And mm -hmm. someone brought it up on the Gilded the other day. So uh, not we don't have a Gilded, yeah. but the uh, something. Yeah. At least I might um, tap our locals community in the not too distant future. Yeah. Oh, for like run, running one shots. Run and shit. one run shots yeah. or like a short, a short gimmick. Uh, yeah. A three shot. You know, an arc. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't want to prep. And yeah, <laughs> when I read that in the GM section, I was like, oh boy, I don't know about this. <laughs> Um, but we will have McCreese back on to talk about it after I have had enough time to actually read the whole book because yes. I've been like looking to different sections and <laughs> I, you know, I haven't done an actual read through, so I can't, I yeah. can't make a judgment on it, uh, or talk to him and be like, why'd you do this? It's like, did you read it? No, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> didn't answer my question. Yeah, And I'm still reading, uh, you know, the remaining thousand pages of acts yeah yeah <laughs> so. that's and that's where i'm at right now is yeah. I'm, I'm running acts for my home game so oh, nice nice i'm i'm reading a lot of acts yeah yes yeah. how's that going for you by the way what are you finding any any challenges or anything um we what's just your, created what's your characters so oh okay <laughs> okay cool all right so we'll have to check back in in a couple of weeks then because mm -hmm. we've done yeah. four sessions now that sounds right yeah yeah i think four sessions and mm -hmm. There was kind of a learning curve, and we're never mapping a dungeon out ever again. Ever again. That, that mechanic <laughs> in, into the trash it goes. Um, there's uh, that was the biggest source of like hiccups in our, in our biggest session. But there, it's like there's we were talking about it directly before this. Like yeah. the the proficiency system is kind of a hassle. Uh, the way it's written. And yeah, because it, it, everything links back to other things. Yeah, it's like yeah. this proficiency functions as this proficiency, yeah. and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And so, but I'm like, in okay, this well, way, yeah, it functions it, as this other proficiency, as this spell, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. but only in this way. Yeah, or for this purpose, right? And so, like tracking back, like, okay, well, what the fuck was the first proficiency and the second one? It's uh, that is irritating. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of really good stuff to like in Axe. Uh, yeah. I really like it. Um, but we're going to have oh, to yeah. continue to play it and yes. then we'll make videos about it at the end of the year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, what I'm so what sorry. But that... 
I will say, uh, and I'll just interrupt you one more time before you start talking. <laughs> um, uh, if there's anything else that you guys want to talk about with regards to the Kickstarter um, or things you're working on that we didn't get to right now. Only thing I really have is uh, check back on that Kickstarter tomorrow if you want to check out Ryan's kick-ass cover because it'll be done tomorrow. Oh, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I feel nice. so bad for not having it. I wanted to have it to kind of spotlight on your show here as kind of a thing, but my bad on that. Sorry, Ryan. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely check it out. I, I Anytime I get a Kickstarter update, uh, I'm, I'm opening that app like immediately. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Could Ascendant be akin to DCC, where it looks more intimidating than what it no, really is? I, no, I think it probably is as intimidating as it looks. Yeah. yeah and this is as someone who has <clears throat> just read it and has not actually played it. Yeah. It's less, the thing is, once I started reading it, it was less intimidating, but, but I was like, I was running into these things where it was like, I don't want to run a game in this way. Well, because I'm which, just, that's now, the problem. I'm not afraid of it. I just know that I can't. Yeah, uh, like this. Yeah. This you know, I was afraid of it. Yeah. Afraid of it at first. <laughs> I started reading it. I was like, I might be too stupid to run this game. Yeah, um, I know I'm not too stupid. I'm just not sure if I'd like it. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see here. Oh my god! Now, one, of the, one of the things that you guys mentioned mm -hmm. there, um, at, you know, young Steve mentioned running Vampire. I've always yeah. wanted to play Vampire, but I've okay. always been... I, I've always had in my mind what I would want from a Vampire game, and it's not what l almost anyone else who plays Vampire wants. From well, that's I probably... Believe that. I believe that, and that's <laughs> probably a sign that you want a good yeah, Vampire game. Yeah, it's probably good <laughs> Because the majority of people who play Vampire are terrible at yes. it and run the most cringe shit that you've ever heard of. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well, I'll keep you in mind. If you're yeah. uh, if you're you're down, we can uh, get you in a, uh, a VTM game. Yeah. Because that, I, like, like I was saying before we went on the air, that video you made about uh, you know, vampire, like basically the, uh, the Camarilla as La Casa Nostra, yeah. that that's what I, has always appealed to me about the world of vampire. It's, <clears throat> yeah. you know, it's a right. lot of the same stuff yeah. that I put into Night Haven. It's this kind of underworld mentality. I've always wanted to be like a bruja that's like a leg breaker for a vampire mafia or yeah. you know, uh -huh. something like that. That's where my head is at. And then I see people play vampire and mm -hmm. it seems like if you came with that kind of energy into their vampire <laughs> game, you would very quickly be shown the door. Yeah. yeah. I see people not playing vampire. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was like, we started watching a clip of uh, LA by night, which is like the, the, was it? It's the it's a I can't almost say Jason Alexander uh, like What's a live play. Who? Oh, okay. Jason Carl. Jason Carl. So Jason Carl runs the game, um, and it's got he a lot had of the game. right <laughs> the right reaction. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's this clip. Yeah. Zoom in. So it's this clip. It's like they've got the some of the critical role cast on it, and there's uh, two of the chicks. Uh, start like making out and just like, like <laughs> he's just like sitting there drinking a cup yeah, of coffee. Yeah, it's just like Matthew McConaughey smoking yeah. the cigarette. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's so it's golden. Funny. Yeah, but the, the, it was like the the clips of that game. I was just like, holy shit, this yeah. is what you're doing with this game. Yeah. Like this is so bad. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It's such a I, shame because Jason Carl probably the best gm like i've seen he looks the, like he's running a good game yeah he mm -hmm. there's like he is a nosferatu like yeah you know, <laughs> like he doesn't he doesn't ever break like yeah. people do this this shit is just all right well yeah we do this now yeah like <laughs> then this yeah exactly which is great <laughs> which is great uh imagine the power that could be unlocked by having normal people yeah like, <laughs> 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 All right. Apparently, there's some kind of controversy around the Bruja that I don't know about. Uh, I just thought that they were like the like the biker gang vampires. Well, they can be. That's yeah. uh, people get the Bruja wrong more than any other other clan. I yeah, think. but I mean, they they also. I just don't like the Bruja. They didn't. They, <clears throat> the the problem with the Bruja is the the identity of the Bruja. They tried. They tried to 
translate what they thought the player base would be into a clan, a clan. which yeah. is goth I will punk. be right back, yeah. gentlemen. I'm so sure, sorry. Sure. I have to say goodbye to my wife really quick. She's okay. leaving no for work. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So like, that's the gimmick of, of the, the, the Bruja. They're like rabble rouser, youthful adolescent punks. Except that. Yeah. They are also giga philosopher. Yeah, giga philosophers. The true inheritors of, of like Homeric Greece. Yeah, it the, the, the rulers a, of Carthage. It's it's very stupid. It's so it's the, so the, the thing that bothers me, and this we we've been talking about this because we're going to be making we're going to be doing clan uh, videos. Yeah, mm -hmm. clan videos. Um, is that like the VTM? The clans don't really make much sense because they like some of them sort of get like a vampire myth archetype down like the nosferatu right. is the the yep. clearest one then you have like the gangrel and maybe the ventru the ventru um and this is one of the things that the chronicles of darkness when uh changed over to requiem this is something they improved drastically because they <clears> cut <throat> the number of clans down from For uh, 13 it's realistically like 20 though because there's more there's all these lost clans. There's these, uh, like, right. once you start getting into, like... If you're talking about the bloodlines as well. It's yeah. not even just bloodlines. It's just, like, yeah. if you go to... The, there's that, like, magical city that the Black Hand can go to in a different dimension. And there's yeah. statues of all the antediluvians. And then they're like, wait, there's 20 statues here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh-oh, there's more clans. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, exactly. More more books to sell now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but the... Uh, they took Requ it down to five. Yeah, Requiem right? took mm -hmm. it down to five. And they yeah. got, like... These are like the mythological vampire archetypes. And that was yeah. why I was like this. Oh, I was instantly like, yes, this is so good. Um, so there's, yeah. it's not just the Bruja that have problems. It's but like there are, there are clan. clans which gotcha. don't get the vampire archetype, which were good, even though everybody gets them wrong. Like the, Mal the Malkavian is actually, uh, actually are a decent clan. It's just right. everybody, everybody fucks them up. It's mostly a player problem. It's mostly a player. It's yeah. also a writing problem. But the that idea, like, okay, insanity that's not yeah. a vampire thing but that's different same with the tremere right different but cool different but cool my whole like so my whole understanding of vampire comes from playing vampire the masquerade bloodlines which is great it's which is probably the best <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah best bloodlines game. is great that yeah. is an excellent example of what a, it's a great game chronicle. should be yeah yes but like what i see from the malkavians based on that is that they're very much that like they are the the drain catch for that kind of player it's like the bard in D. &D. yes it, yeah you, like you go there when you want to be the person who like wants to grab attention and yeah those people basically... shouldn't be allowed at the table yes um right you have to play them like the vorman sisters Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Therese and I think it's Therese and which, Jeanette. which primarily means that you have to be hot. That's no. true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to be that unless you're yeah. an Osferatu. Everybody has to be hot. Yeah, obviously, or you don't get to play. Yeah, you have to pass the physiognomy check. Yeah, or you have to successfully <laughs> fail the physiognomy, physiognomy check. check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Failed successfully. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rex Steele said, you guys have opened a new doorway for me with Vampire. I would nice. have never been interested in it if it weren't for you guys. So thank you. You're very welcome. And that's good to hear. Because yeah. that is that is the We need to take thing. it back yeah, exactly. from the freaks. From the freaks. And we will. Like, I, so much of what Keelan and I are trying to do um, is, like, begin kind of the RPG Reconquista. Yeah. In well, a lot of what? ways. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Th that's what guts and glory is at the end of the day. And we'll, we'll probably be talking about this a lot more in the future, especially next week on uh, uh, diversity and dragons. I'm going to get way too spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. But well, like, I'm sure he'll appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what this is. Like we're, we're two uh, young guys. We're both at the like very tail end of the millennial generation. Some would yeah. even call us zoomers even though I wouldn't put myself in that generation. You don't um, seem like a Zoomer, mm -hmm. is what I would say. You don't have the broccoli haircut, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it, basically we see it as our time to decide, like, where this hobby is going for the future. We're still both in our 20s, so we're gonna, like, we're gonna push for this kind of return to true heroism and true fantasy. And yeah, yeah. To do that, we're gonna have to like kick in some some doors and 
mm. yell some unpleasant things at people and, and stuff like that. I think they're I very pleasant things to yeah. yell. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> yelling very pleasant saying. things at very unpleasant people. Yes, <laughs> yes that's yes. fair. Yeah, yeah. And it's not so much that I want to ruin everyone else's like modern games with their fifth edition Barbie dress up and everything of that nature. That's not what I'm going after. That I have no interest in Why that. Not, it's just though? you yeah. won't. You should though. If, if you want to try and take my fantasy, come, come on, take it out of my hands. I dare you. You know yeah. what I mean? It's one yeah. of those mentalities. It's uh, just... there's a line in the sand that needs to be drawn as far yeah. as. And Where are need... we going with this? Right. <laughs> you need more. You need more games that are about aspirational things you know like right. lawful characters and i'm fine with like you know grimy stuff like my vampire as well but right um like i like aspirational stories not this like yeah you're just great how you are don't change it all you know it's like no That's right yeah you should or, want to be better <laughs> or like right, you exactly. said initially like isn't it isn't this great and isn't this brown breaking ground breaking how trash everything is and yeah. everybody is right everything. you know like i know yeah i just i loathe i loathe loser energy it's yes. so true it's, it has yeah, to be stopped it does but it can only be stopped by active participation in doing something else you know what i mean like yeah. yes like yes. you have to kind of be that change you want to see <laughs> well and, that, and here's the other thing is all this shit where you know people are like times have changed this is the you know the changing base of D. &D. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. people are starving for yeah. masculine yeah like, aspirational cool shit all right yeah. they're starving for it every right. time a movie comes out that just does some masculine shit like Top Gun or, you know, like the, mm -hmm. uh, that show there's a, like just Reacher, Reacher, things like that. Instant success. Yeah, Everybody yeah. loves it. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. this is, you know, there's not even like an uphill battle here. Right. <laughs> you just need to make something yeah. that like normal people would like, and they're going to buy it like crazy. Like, yeah. You know? It's so true. They're, it's normal. desperate for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Just be normal. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you just possible. be normal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Broccoli haircut is a curse on mankind. True. It, it is. is. I've never heard it called that, but I know exactly what we're talking about. So that's yeah. a problem in itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Zoomer perm. Yeah, we need heroes yes. psychologically and spiritually, and we I'm live it you. out vicariously through role playing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And sometimes we live out evil psychopaths as well but <laughs> but, <laughs> but we do prefer the heroic <laughs> stories mm -hmm. um nice and with that we are uh we're a couple caught minutes up. over and we're caught up with the chat finally so Heck unless you guys yeah. start sending us lots of money in the super chats in like the next 30 seconds we are you should do up. that though yeah. just for yeah, just cuz <laughs> <laughs> makes yeah. straight. anyways it was great to have you guys on and Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. For having us. Look at, i'm looking forward to getting my my copy of this when it comes yeah, out same. And, uh, i'm excited yeah, to see what you think it's uh it sounds really it. really great hmm. all right with that time <laughs> Good night, everybody. Right. I am going to end the stream now. Good night. Meow. Thank you once again. <laughs>